Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. We are here recording episode number 51. We are going to have a very special guest on the episode with us today, telling us all the ins and outs about living in Russia, what it's like in St. Petersburg, along with a couple stories along the way. But before we get to our special guest, uh, without further ado, I am happy to introduce my good buddy and my co-host, Jared. What's going on, Jared? Privet. Um... I'm Jared, and I have a baboshka. Uh, um, uh, welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. Uh, please follow us on Twitter, Untranslatable1, on Instagram, Untranslatable Podcast, or you can email stuff. Um, you can email us Untranslatable Phrases. You can email us Songs of the Pod, uh, travel stories, or fun, uh, you know, uh, um, enticing pictures. Uh, any of those work. Don't do the last one. I take that back. That was a bad idea. <laughs> and That could backfire really quickly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it's good to be here. That's all I got. I, I have nothing else. I, I realize I should stop while I'm ahead. That's fair. Nothing wrong with that. Well, without further ado, I would also like to introduce our special guest, my good buddy David, who has spent some time abroad in Russia and speaks, uh, well... I have no idea how good his Russian is because I don't speak it, but to my ear, it sounds pretty damn good. My buddy David, how's it going, David? It's going great. Thank you both, Chad and Jared, for having me on the show. Uh, as Chad said, uh, I'm sort of a Russia fan, I guess you could say, and I'm teaching English uh, like Chad here in the Czech Republic uh, in a town called Hradets, Kralove. Russia fan. See, I speak German, but I don't consider myself a German fan. What? What? How long... Did, like when, since when did you become a Russia fan? Uh, well, I guess I should say Russian language fan. Okay. That'd probably be more correct. I, like, I want to see your uh, Google searches. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like uh, you know, ten hour Soviet mo- movie uh, playlist. But anyways, uh, no, I I really. I mean, I've always been uh, fascinated in Russian culture, uh, Russian language. When I was um, a uh, kid, uh, my grandmother hosted a Russian woman at her house for a few years, and so I got to know her. Her name was Oksana, but other than that, I didn't really know a lot. And I got to university, and uh, my university required a language, and so I said, hmm, you know, what should I take? You know, French, Whoa, Spanish. you started late. Yeah, I started my freshman year of college, okay. and that was, what, five years ago? And here I am now. That's kind of impressive, then. I didn't realize this was all. I assumed um, this was like a longer journey because Russian in general just seems so daunting. So it's like you need at least like 20 years to get good at that. I mean, like, where do you start? Because do you start at the at the um, I mean, just the alphabet? Is that you start? Yeah, that's that's like the first two weeks of class is what letter is this? You know, learning the Russian alphabet. And I mean, could you go through it right now? (laughs) <laughs> uh, <laughs> all of it yeah. how long is this <laughs> so it ends up being uh, like a five hour podcast three hours I don't, of I don't, just... <laughs> I don't know yeah. uh, I don't you know actually I don't know how many letters I don't know the count for the number of letters in the Russian alphabet uh, but it's more than English oh this um, would, it would it's... not be like saying the ABCs no do they have a fun no. song with, with it I haven't heard one. I don't think yeah. there's a song, but there is. So. There are letters in the <laughs> Russian alphabet that don't make a sound. Wait, what? Yes, there are two letters in the Russian alphabet. Okay. Uh, it's called soft sign and hard sign, and they just uh, modify other consonants. Mm-hmm. But you can't say them. Isn't there there's similar no, stuff there's... like in Czech with that? Yes, is but it, really? but it's yes, but it's okay. like accent markings, right? Oh, so there will yeah. be accent on a consonant or next to a consonant. Mm-hmm. Um, this is its own letter, or the Russians consider them their own letters. It's called Tvornizak and Myakiznak. So in high, there you go. did you take any like uh, languages in high school or anything? I did. I took French. Okay. Uh, and I and I've forgotten most of it. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Me too. That's the same for you, isn't it, Jared? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Wow. So I, I, I'm, I'm so caught up on this learning in five years. So you had to like go deeper than most of your average classmates there to be able to even get to that level in five years. Uh, yeah. So a lot of my classmates, actually, they were either like heritage speakers, you know, their, their family spoke it or they had some Russian before. I was actually one of the only people in my class that had no prior 
Russian experience. So uh-huh. yes, I just had to jump right into it. But um, as I assume we're going to talk about in just a few minutes, I had the opportunity to go to Russia uh, yeah, yeah. for half a year, and I learned a lot, a lot about Russian culture, le- Russian language, and much, much more. I know nothing about Russia. It's it's almost like a um, it's almost like a, like Gotham City to uh, like a, <laughs> like us Americans. It's like oh, don't go there. <laughs> yes, yeah, definitely. And the the visa process to go to Russia is not easy. Right? It's yeah, it's definitely oh, a little imagine. difficult. All right, right, and and we'll definitely get to all that um, yeah. in the main segment without a doubt. That is for sure. Uh, I've just been curious, though, Jared. What's uh, what's been going on in your life? What's what's new? Um, I got nothing, man. I got nothing. Literally, my life is so boring these days. But I, I, I did um, specifically for an Instagram post I made. I was going to piano lessons the other day, and I saw a house around the corner. Or I, I, well, first I saw a house around the corner from. Uh, um, from my piano teacher's place, and I was like, oh, this is perfect. And I ended up, I got to my piano lesson like 15 minutes early, and I ended up walking around my piano teacher's ba- uh, neighborhood, this little like big circle, just taking pictures and videos of all the ridiculous Christmas lights. Nice. <laughs> Doing it for the gram. I like it. Did I you saw see, that video. Did you see the that full on, um, I think there was all the ridiculous stuff, but the one that really got me was the... Uh, the 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 cutout of the manger, like the Jesus and the Mary and Joseph in the manger. Uh huh. Then, like the the ne- I guess you'd say the negatives of it projected onto the side of this white house into this giant, full on uh, uh, just side wall mural of uh, Jesus and Mary. I was like, that is creative. Who? I mean, ridiculous. <laughs> right. That's dedication but creative, right there. Nonetheless. For sure. <laughs> Speaking of Christmas lights, I did uh, this week I did a lesson on Christmas in the United States, and I showed some of my more advanced students the clip from Christmas Vacation, like the Griswold Christmas right. House, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. That scene where he goes to light and explodes. the explodes. <laughs> yeah, and it <laughs> explodes, and the neighbors fall down the stairs, and the students love that. Yeah, um, but yeah. were they were they all laughing? Like, uh, were they all? Did they actually find it funny? Yeah. Oh yeah, so, they were cracking up. I know a lot of people that do not find. Um, um, like the um, what do you call it family vacation Slapstick? stuff no the family oh, yeah. vacation stuff funny at all and i go back and forth i go back and forth that okay. i mean but that's just that's a fair. classic hilarious scene watching chevy chase explode Who? oh for sure <laughs> well not him but the but the house but yeah. right but doesn't he fall well, i guess off? he does explode because he well he literally well, he does doesn't explode he doesn't like die no <laughs> <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a bad ending to the to the movie that's for for sure but yeah um, other than that, though, dude, I, I have some news. Why? Uh, so today, you said that like someone's pregnant. I was like, oh no. <laughs> Thankfully, no, nobody's <laughs> pregnant that, that I know of. Um, but uh, no, and I went so, to the nursing school today. <laughs> but I, I ended up going to the nursing school today to teach a few lessons on the United States and on Christmas. Well, and, what do you mean uh, by nursing school? The, the school for um, people going into medicine and nursing. So it's for oh, okay. soci- um, um, social work, sorry, not sociology, but social work and, and like nursing, working in a hospital. Right, right, right. I wasn't sure if you meant like a nursing home at first. No, no, no. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. And so my school is a technical school and it's like 90, if not 95% guys, right? Mm-hmm. The nursing school, it's like the opposite. And, and the first lesson, it weirded me out a little bit looking around and just seeing all of these girls just staring at me while I was talking, because I'm not used to it <laughs> it's anymore. Chad's worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but what was interesting is I was really surprised how shy they were in the beginning. Eventually, I got them talking and, and to feel more comfortable and speak English. But I, I've gotten so used to my own students, and they know me fairly well by now, that I can go in and just have a casual conversation to start class and mm-hmm. get going. And I think because I was just such a new face there, um, you know, they, they didn't really know what to make of me or, or the lesson or, you know, speaking English. But the craziest thing about the lesson, though, Jared, okay. is in each one of my classes, there were also a few students that sat in the class, but they're actually learning German and not English. So I would go back and forth in this lesson <coughs> from English to German. Did you, like you I had that was going to be happening? 
I had no idea until I stepped in the school and they said, by the way, there will be a few students who are taking German, but we're, we're letting them join the class Wait, for your did lessons. Wait, do they know you speak German? or are they... Yeah, yeah, they knew. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they were told I spoke German. Kind of so that was a really interesting teaching environment. You should have stood sure. your ground and been like, hey, I'm an English teacher right now. You can't just <laughs> undermine my my profession like this. How dare you? Well, they well they introduced me as an English teacher and a German teacher. Okay. Which you is, love not, that, is not incorrect. Yeah, you love I, I did. Like, yes, I am. I did. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that's correctly right. everyone hey I, I worked hard on those master's degrees man i gotta i gotta take all the recognition i can get that's fair that's fair um but it was interesting it was cool and the, the teachers were really nice at the school and really welcoming and uh is that just a one-time thing i i might go back again and teach a few more lessons we'll we'll see um depends on my schedule and their schedule but do they not have yeah, an we'll english see. teacher over there no they have multiple english teachers but it's just that you know it's that and i'm sure david can attest to this as well there's just kind of something glitzy and glamorous about being a native speaker in your school. So they like, Am I right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. They kind of like pawn you out as like, uh, or like put you out there as like, uh, oh, well, well, like you can borrow our American English teacher. I would say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're exotic. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with it. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how it is at your school, Chad, but I have the teachers uh, sort of vying for my time. You've done? Yeah. Have you done the yeah. same thing? Yes. Yeah. Same thing. So, is that how you end up in all those um, like groups and stuff that you're in? No, those are those are of my <coughs> own my own creation. Okay. Okay. And, so they and don't David like does do they after school stuff as well? Do, it's but the same people thing. but people are seeking you out to learn English because you mentioned that that back mm -hmm. and forth you do with those two teachers they seek you out right? Well, and well, I also had told my mentor here that I wanted to learn Czech, and so she put me in contact with them, just as like a. They want to learn English. You want to learn Czech. Let's get something going. What's your interest level in learning Czech, David? My interest level? Uh, so since I speak Russian, I guess I have a bit of an advantage coming into it, uh -huh. right? He's that Slavic, for sure. Slavic language connection. Uh, but, and, and I mean, I want to. I study Czech every week. I speak with Czech speakers every week, but it is hard. Yeah. I'm sure Chad has talked about that. It is hard yeah. language. I will though I will though also vouch for David that I really believe that he is um I think he takes his Czech learning a little bit more seriously or puts a little bit more time into it than I do. Hmm. I okay. would say. So Chad uses Chad tries to um in, in times of peril, of times of language peril. Get my new book, Times of Language Peril. <laughs> in times of language peril, um Chad uh, reaches out and for the German just in a last ditch effort. I'm assuming, have you tried that with Russian? I have, and I did, especially when I first got here. But because um, I assume you know, your so success rate's way higher than German. So yes, old people, older people here do tend to speak Russian, right? Because they were required to in school, just like they're required to learn English now. Mm -hmm. uh, but because of you know hard feelings, because of the uh, Soviet invasion in 1968, um, and some anti-Russian feelings today, sometimes people, especially uh, maybe middle-aged younger people, they don't care for it, um, mm -hmm. and they they'll look at it quite negatively if you start speaking Russian. I can get that. I I kind of get that. Speaking of Russian, when I was teaching one of the <laughs> lessons today, the the Russian teacher sat in on the lesson, which I I don't really know you why really he's there. A celebrity. He was there. <laughs> I guess he was sitting in on the lesson and then and then I had the students go around and introduce themselves and we were doing this activity and then you know I thought we were done but technically it was then his turn and he said all this stuff to me in Russian and one of the other teachers who speaks some Russian was laughing and he was laughing and I just kind of stood up there and I was like uh hey fuck that's, you that's strange <laughs> yeah it was, it was interesting um I think he was just trying trying to be be nice and be funny right um, he wasn't insulting was you to so your confused. face <laughs> I was just so confused and I was kind of like well my my uh lack of Russian skills right now are very very clear but uh do you do good. you run into a lot of Russian in your in your life Chad or is that just a that just a coincidence that that well, happened while uh, that, that one here. time, and then and then when David and I were in Carlo Vivari, <laughs> right? What like a month ago? No, it was maybe two that. months. Maybe two months. That, yeah, we heard some Russian around us, and a lot of the stores yeah. and shops had Russian. Yeah, um, in the windows. Um, but other than that, yeah, I mean, I don't come across very much Russian. So, is this your uh, first time in the Czech Republic? Uh, David, <laughs> yeah, uh, second. So. 
the reason why I wanted to come here again uh, was because I was here in 2015. I did a very short summer program in Prague. I really liked it, you know, loved the beer, loved the atmosphere in Prague, you know, loved the history and the architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, I studied history at university. Um, I really wanted to come here, and I wanted to go somewhere other than Prague. You know, I'd heard it was great, seen pictures, talked to people, but I'd, I only really spent time in Prague, so I thought, you know, I'll come back here, work on my Czech language a little bit, try to learn some Czech and see what it's like, and so far I've absolutely loved it. Uh, are you on the road to polyglotism? Are you are you hoping to add l more and more languages to your to your repertoire, or is just just is it just more out of because you're there, you're gonna l try to learn it? I I'm interested in Slavic languages in particular, yeah. and there's three. So there's these three Slavic language categories. You may have heard of them. There's East Slavic, which is Russian, Ukrainian, Belarusian. There's West Slavic which is Polish, Czech, Slovakian, um, and actually a Slavic language that exists in a small part of Germany called Sorbian. Uh, Interesting. I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> and, and then there's South Slavic, which is Croatian, Quirky. Slovenian, Serbian, Macedonian, and Bulgarian, and I think Bosnian. Um, so uh, I think I would like to learn one of each category because generally the the categories are so similar to each other, right? Like Russian, Ukrainian, Czech, and Slovak, mm -hmm. that if you can understand one of those subcategories of Slavic, you can understand all the others in that category. So if I were to learn one from all three, it's sort of, uh, you know, bring, I could bring it all together. Right. I feel like that's a that's a solid bang for your buck journey to <laughs> yeah. polyglotism right there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tough start, but I think once you, it seems like once you start to get it, that is a good bang for your buck, but it's just, it seems so intimidating to start. You know, it's people, I mean, people, I look at it as like, you know, you used to starting from scratch and it, it's just so intimidating. Oh yeah. And it, and not that it doesn't seem useful, but I am, when I think bang for, for my buck, like the next language I really want to learn is Spanish. Like that seems like a real bang for your buck language right there, especially in the U S because just about every, state you go to with, with that has a big city that is probably going to be useful or could be fun useful f fun fact for you jared if you can speak english and spanish you can speak to over 70 percent of the world population all right never mind i don't want to learn it you know what i'm actually going to unlearn some english <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go there you go uh okay nice um uh, uh uh so how's the teaching how's the teaching at your school Thank uh, at mine? Yeah. Uh, it's All these very questions good. are for you. I, I don't <laughs> want to know anything about chat. He doesn't care. Okay. You talk too much, is it? <laughs> That's understandable. <laughs> uh, this is a so nice change of pace for what someone else to talk to. <laughs> it's really great. There's uh, So I teach at an art school, right? It's woodworking and design. So my students make... Oh, that's cool. Uh, they make they make musical instruments, which is really cool. Oh, what? Uh, and and guitars, bro. Yeah, guitars. They oh, make Chad, furniture. How jealous are you? Super jealous. <laughs> yeah. They make furniture. They make carvings. They make paintings. Uh, what else do they make? They make I don't know. They they design all these really cool, interesting things. Um, and so they're super talented to begin with. Um, and I love art. I love music. So my students are always very happy to talk about art and music. Um, and we do a lot with art and music in our English lessons. So it's, it's, it's oh. a fun time. How, how, how so? Like you incorporate it into the teaching you mean? Yeah. Can you get some so, examples? Uh, yes. So for example, with my third year class, we were talking about housing. Um, and so like, uh, we went through the important vocabulary, you know, what are the rooms of the house? What kind of houses are there? You know, the types of house where you can live at, um, the, fur you know, the furniture. Did I say that? Yeah. Furniture. Um, and since they're design students and they spend a lot of time like working with either 3d models or actually drawing designs, um, and oftentimes for interior, the assignment and that we worked together on and then I had them do individually was come up with your dream home 
and then draw it and then be able to talk oh. about it, right? And so they could draw all this really elaborate interior, all the furniture. They could design the house and then they had the vocabulary to talk about it. Oh, and, and then they were like standing up and like, this is my, this is the living room. This is the kitchen. Yes, yeah. This is my tree house. When, one of the students, <laughs> she, she, did, she did a tree house and she said, okay, this is how I get into the tree house. This is the well, furniture. Well, see, that's cool. And, and that, and that kind of like naturally makes them want to like go above and beyond because then there's like the it, like putting in the modeling or or, the, or that part they're like oh i want my thing to look cool i don't want to come in with some boring looking thing and i want to yeah and so they put way more work into the modeling. like well now you gotta explain it to me he's like oh yeah that's right i gotta do that part too and i actually had the uh the pleasure of seeing some of these uh pictures last week when i was visiting david I tell you what, man, some of them were drawn really, really well. That's I mean, awesome. It looked really awesome. Yeah. I, I want to see some of them. Um, I, I've tried to teach myself Google Sketch, which is Google's version of 3D modeling. It is so, ag like, like it's both, it's cool, but it's also so aggravating. And um, I, 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 I've taken a break from it for a while, but I want to get back to learning that. But um, I feel like I'm starting to get to the age where, um, like Chad was with trying to figure out his FaceTime a second ago, I feel like I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm starting to get to the age where, like, I'm slowly starting to get to like where um, I'm now like intimidated by te some technology. It's like I don't feel like trying to figure this out. It's like, but it's like, but I still want to figure it out, and I feel like I can. But I'm slowly just like, ugh, I mean, really, as I'm as I'm learning, I'm like, when am I ever going to really need how to <laughs> need 3D modeling? <laughs> At you work, never know. At work, you never I know. My boss me, uh, was had this idea for something, and he wanted us to find a um, find like someone that could make us a three D modeling in our engineering department. And my dumbass was like, "Oh, I'm learning it. I could probably make it for you." And <laughs> within like <laughs> within like fifteen minutes of sitting down and starting this, I was like, "I have made a giant mistake." <laughs> <laughs> Did you end up telling your boss? Oh like, yeah. yeah, he's like, "Oh yeah, I didn't actually. He didn't really. I don't think he actually expected. I, I, I but yeah, no. Uh, I don't. I think he knew that I couldn't do it because I had also made it clear that I was in the process of learning how to use the uh, thing. So I was like, Just "Give me like two weeks to figure it out." Another two weeks and I'll make it, <laughs> and it'll be good to go. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know if this is gonna work how I thought it was gonna work. Right. But, yeah. That would be tough. Yeah. Uh, that would be tough. So I saw um, on Instagram that Chad got two beer or a beer and some peppermint schnapps from his students. Oh, he he's, he has them right now. A Pilsner Urquell, of course. Pilsner Urquell with the ribbon. Their, their obsession with Pilsner Urquell is hilarious to me. <laughs> that and the and the Zelena, which is Czech for green, and yeah, that's the peppermint schnapps. Did you get any so gifts nice from your little... students? I have not yet. Well, well I didn't yet. Uh, okay. We have a Christmas yet. party on Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Uh, and in preparation for the Christmas party, yesterday we made gingerbread cookies together and they mm. were absolutely delicious where did you do that you guys have a kitchen at your school so we have a dorm uh the school has a dorm it's like a it's kind of like a boarding house but it feels like you know a, a college dorm um and there's a kitchen on every floor with with mm. these little bitty ovens and so we made some cookies in the ovens does your school have a dorm chad um i th i think there is but i've never been to it before okay. Uh, I think it's about 20 minutes walking distance away. Why does his school so much, sound so much more fun? It sounds like uh, you're in a, uh, almost a television version of... <laughs> they're, we made they're treats very, and played instruments together. and <laughs> They're just very made different our dream uh, home. schools. Sat in a circle know, and sang is, together. Is, exactly. Well, my, my school is more for um, like IT engineering, right, right. Um, things like that. So it's just a whole different... Mm -hmm. If you were into gaming and computers, you'd be in heaven at my school. Right. Um, because it seems like every, every, almost every student in one of my classes, especially on Mondays, you know, I'll usually have a quick little warm up while I'm getting the, the PowerPoint loaded. And I'll ask them, you know, what did you do during the weekend? And it's almost always the same answer every week played, played computer games all week. <laughs> Not always, but usually. Um, but yeah. Do any of them play competitively? Um, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a couple of them play competitively. What, what, what are their that, what are their big uh, go to games for the competitive stuff? FIFA? I have no idea. I'll have to ask them. No, computer wow. games, my man. FIFA. I, oh right. Can you play right. FIFA on the computer. I don't think that's. I don't think that's I a think go to. That's a console for, game. Yeah, you're right. I don't think they think do that competitively on a computer. I mean, I know there are some students at my school who do enjoy FIFA. 
But um, I don't know if they play it competitively. Because FIFA's the shit. I love FIFA. That, that, that is true. <laughs> Me too. But speaking of my students, I would like to move on to our shout outs and give a big shout out to my E3 class for hooking me up with some tasty little uh, Christmas oh, uh, liquid <laughs> treats. You're good. Um, yeah, I, I, I came into the classroom this morning and uh, they were just sitting on the desk and I, I kind of had an idea they were for me, but I wasn't really sure. I was like talking and I kind of avoided looking at them. And then Wait, so you had the, started te- class of, had, had what you just started class with them just sitting there and would not even yep, acknowledge yep. that? <laughs> I, I, I didn't. It was a little awkward on my part. So so my bad, E3. But because, uh, you know, I didn't I didn't bring them anything, you know, so I felt a little guilty, um, you know, but it was it was it was really nice. Of them, so really were cool. you, were, was your plan to just never mention it the whole class because you didn't bring anything? You're like, well, I'm just going to take this in shame and not say anything because I, I didn't mean, bring anything. I mean, That's better. I think that's I think better that than was... acknowledging it and saying thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did say I did say thank you. But, oh, you um, did. Okay, okay. I did. Yeah, I literally thought like you I just walked ignored. in and like almost like di- act, act, like pretend it didn't even exist. Just just walk in, <laughs> see it on the desk, and be like, oh, and then leave leave the class. Betcha. That would have been bad. <laughs> that would have been really bad. But no, I just uh, I was a little embarrassed because I didn't bring anything, and and you know that was what really thoughtful the whole and kind of class though. I don't know. A thing of Christmas cookies, something small. Chad, uh, you are you can't make anything. Do you know how to turn on an oven? Dude, the only thing I use to cook food here is my oven. I am a <laughs> king with my oven. Well, okay, you might know how to turn on an oven, but that's still a case in point. I think you're still proving my point. <laughs> well, no, I, I said I would go buy Christmas cookies. Oh, 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 oh. Because oh, I'm, I'm not oh. trying to give my students food poisoning. <laughs> um, I like my students. So, so yeah, but that's my first shout-out. Oh my, my second shout-out has kind of a different story this is kind of badass this sounds like something that indiana jones would do so i don't know if you've heard about this jared but there was a phd student that was stuck in an isis war zone whoa and he was studying at lund university which is in i believe sweden and uh, there's an isis his... community in sweden no 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 he was in <laughs> i'm know, pretty I'm sure he kidding. was in iraq or... <laughs> he was in iraq and so well, what was he doing so... there what's his major like, uh, was it like journalism or something? Oh, chemistry. 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 He went back because his uh, family. Oh, he's fr- he, okay. He went back to try to help his family. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. And so he he had texted his his uh, dissertation advisor and told her, if I'm not back in a week, um, this dissertation is probably not happening, and um, Jeez. that you know maybe life is over. And so he. He was. was that what, this, excuse me. You said maybe life is over. I, I mean, so. I mean, if you're captured by ISIS, life is probably oh, over. Oh, I thought you were saying he just wouldn't. Okay. This, oh, oh no. okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got you. I'm, I'm following. You, all right, we all on the same page. Okay, yes. good. It's just intense. So, I'm just... so right here. So, so this gentleman's name is, um, I believe it's Juma. So he said, um, I had no hope. Um, I was desperate. I just wanted to tell my supervisor what was happening, um, and what she ended up doing is um, she sent, she hired some security group and basically sent mercenaries and this professor got him out safely from Iraq and he is now back in Sweden, finished his PhD, I believe, and is now working for a pharmaceutical company. Wow. Go ahead, ask away. I see you want to ask some questions, Jerry. Mercenaries, though? I mean, right here it says. Where do you even find a mercenary? So right here, she contacted the university security I mean, chief. Listen, I'm not hating, by the way. This is more just out of curiosity. Like, are these so people over open a few for- days? Right. So over a few days of intense activity, Gustafson hired a security company. Did she pay which for them? Then arranged. That's got to be expensive. I would, I, would, I would imagine so. A few, I've a seen few those days guys later, on Instagram. they're balling. Oh, I'm sure they are. Uh, yeah, right here, Jared. A few days later, two Land Cruisers carrying four heavily I armed like mercenaries. Roared into the area where Juma was hiding and sped him away to Herbal Airport together with his wife and two small children. So there you go. So shout out to Damn. Um, to the professor. Um, let me uh, Charlotte Turner. Shout out to you for um, doing all that and helping. Shout your out student. to uh, Blackwater Mercenary Services for <laughs> <laughs> exactly five right. stars and, on Yelp. <laughs> and my last. And my last uh, shout out goes to the city of Madrid. Have you heard anything exciting about the city of Madrid, Jared? 
Um, I saw um, everyone was clowning um, Cristiano Ronaldo because he attempted a uh, a uh, bicycle kick and flopped it, and everyone's because and everyone's making fun of it. It's like, oh, it didn't work like it did last time where he nailed it on Real Madrid's team. Is that, that's not oh, what nice. you're talking about, is it? It, it is not. Okay. No. <laughs> so for a uh, second, Madrid, I actually thought it was. Uh, no, no. Uh, so my second or actually third shout out is Madrid has banned um, any uh, vehicles that have emissions in the city center. Okay. I mean, this is rough that you're making me give this shout out. Lover of all cars, loud and big engined. But okay. That's, that's fair. I understand why this is good. And yeah, that, that is uh, London's pretty. I don't I think they're they're saying they're going to do that by like 2020 something. But but they mm-hmm. heavily uh, like there's it's heavily taxed what like the the bigger your car is in certain city centers I know in right. the London areas sure. and stuff like that. Absolutely. But yeah, that's that's the way the future's going, man. Um, the the future for the internal combustion engine is is bleak, but it's it makes sense because electric cars um, uh, they are way better for the environment, um, and it takes. I th- I just watched a video that said it takes. I believe. Um, you know, everyone talks about how, yeah, uh, ba- electric cars might be um, might be like uh, f- uh, good for the environment and, and 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 not emitting any fuel. But like, um, there's the all the pollution that goes into making batteries. There's that they they use cobalt, they use lithium that you have to mine in Congo and and these with a lot of child labor goes into mining these rare metals. And it turns out that actually only like four to five years and a lot depending on the state. But after four to five years. Electric cars are way better than uh, than like for the environment, which is no time. That's the like the average time that people own cars. So, uh, yeah, that's the way the future is going, and I like it. I think it's good, even though I like cars. I think I also like technology, so it's cool. Oh, definitely, and there still is going to be a need for cars. That was technology talk while um, David and Chad poured their beers. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, so David, how about how about you uh, let our listeners know what what kind of beer we got today? For so beer right beer here time. today, mm-hmm. we have Gambrinus, and there's a picture of a guy who I assume is Gambrinus. Can I see? Uh, and it like? is number twelve. So oh, Gambrinus, hey. Gambi. Do you know who Gambrinus is? I I have no idea. No, do you? No. Oh no. Uh, yeah, I don't have the slightest idea. Um, he but looks yeah. like a king. Oh, for sure. He's got a crown. <laughs> he looks he looks like a cross between Santa Claus and Václav. Or do, you, uh, yeah, yeah. do you want me to... I can tell you who he is. Seems like he's a pretty cool dude. Please, please do. Let's tell Gambrinus is a legendary Uh-oh. European culture hero, kind of like the... Uh, 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 celebrated as an icon of beer, brewing joviality and joie de vivre. Early. Ooh, I like it. All uh, right. <laughs> traditional songs, poems, and stories describe him as a king, duke, or count of Flanders and Brabant. Typical, typical uh, representations in the visual arts depict him as a rotund, bearded duke or king. Uh, essentially, uh, what I'm going to say is a uh, Chad in 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, holding a tankard or mug. And uh, sometimes with a keg nearby. Gambrinus is sometimes erroneously called a, a patron saint, but he is neither a patron saint nor a uh, tut- tutelary daddy. I don't know what that is. That took a weird turn. But yeah, he just seems like a, he's a culture icon, and apparently people just like to use his likeness to represent beer and joviality. I think... Um... The Captain Morgan guy. <laughs> that's that's true. Well, here as a, as a as a way to test this, we gotta give it a try. So, as they yes. say in the Czech Republic, Nazdravi. I'm gonna take a guess and assume that this is what uh, Chad would describe as a Pilsner style bill b- beer to avoid attacks from um, Pilsner or Quell purists on on the Reddit forums and potentially in real life as well. Well, guess what, Jared. Gambrinos is actually brewed at the Pilsner Orkvel Brewery. Okay. All right. Well, I take everything back that I just said, and I'm so sorry. And the company <laughs> was I'm founded in on Gator Piss. That's true. But yeah, so this Talking is... Talking over uh, my Gam- own drops. Gam- <laughs> this is <laughs> right. turning weird. <laughs> so Gambrinos Pilna uh, 12, um, 
what's that now? Dvanatst? Yeah, right? 12. Dvanatst, if you want a little extra check untranslatable. Right Banada. here is a, t is a typical a 12 degree, right? Mm -hmm. 12 degree pale lager, which is 5% ABV. Okay. So I remember the last beer that the Klushevitsky had a 10 on there. Klushevitsa, uh huh. Klushevitsa had a 10 on there. And so is the 12 on the Gambrinus, is that similar concept to the 10 on the Klushevitsk? Exactly. Do you see the, the 12? Uh, I do, yeah. yeah you I see do. the 12 on uh, you're not yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see like the side of it, but yeah, yeah I get, I get mm -hmm. the idea. <laughs> right. So the, the really interesting thing oh, right to me... Oh, top. I see it now perfectly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, here in the Czech Republic, they don't, you know, they don't do what they do at like a craft brewery, local brewery in the U.S., or even with some, you know, of the major beers where they'll say, you know, this is a lager, this is a pilsner, this is a pale ale, whatever. They don't say any of that stuff. They simply have the brand and these numbers, which right. they consider like a grade, right? Um, so this, I guess they would consider a higher grade as a 12 than mm -hmm. the 10. Do you know what the sort of the higher numbers are? Like if you get into like the highest grade stuff, what, what numbers you'd be talking about? I think with like some IPAs, you could go up into 16, 18. So they do do IPA, do do, do they do IPAs in um in the Czech Republic? There's a few. I've had a few. Okay, but they're not. I haven't had one that was quite as bitter as many of the ones you find in the U.S. They're all kind of tame, I'd say. That's uh, one thing I, I recently learned is that um, the U.S. had like that. That's uh, a quality of the U.S. is that they have way more freedom. With um with what they can do with with beer and and a lot of these countries in Europe that have these such old histories of, of brewing stick to antiquated not antiquated but stick to very old rules that limit a lot of the uh, sort of weird beers you can find in uh, in the U.S. pretty commonly I'd say. Yeah, isn't there some German brewing law? Reinheitsgebot. Yeah, fünfzehn sechzehn. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, so the so the purity laws, yeah, I think you you're what a lot three or four ingredients I don't know, in your I beer. Don't, I don't know the I don't know the rules behind that, but yeah, it's the purity laws of fifteen sixteen is what yes. is that that's what it is. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure it's the oldest law um, that there ever was about food or drink, like the first ever type of food or drink regulation. The only and of reason, course it was for beer. I mean, the only reason I'm familiar with fifteen sixteen being the year and it being a purity law is because of the bar we used to go to in Vienna all the time. <laughs> it was called fifteen sixteen. <laughs> Which I will probably be back there in a week. Yeah. Oh man. Was the beer good? Oh yeah. And they had oh, their yeah. own they I mean they were I mean they I think they were kind of un uniquely good because that they like brewed their own stuff there. It Which was, was really yeah good. and it was kind of unique stuff too. I, I liked it there. It was good. Also speaking of the Vienna, food was Austria, not that special though, but it was still good. But the beer was good. That that, that currywurst was pretty good though. That's true. But that, we, we can talk about that later. Interesting fact though, Jared, about Gambrinos and Austria, the the brewery Ottakringer, which is where I used to live in Vienna, also has um, also brews Gambrinos apparently. Okay. And there are also some breweries in Germany that brew Gambrinos as well, and even uh, I believe in Pittsburgh and Columbus, Ohio. So August Wagner Breweries in Columbus, Ohio. I could probably also, find Gambrinus around here. I'm three hours away from Pittsburgh. You should find some. See what you think. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, but I'll but you, you know, we've we've been talking all about Gambrinus. What are your thoughts on the taste, David? What What mm. do you think? You've had a lot of Czech beers. I feel like it's safe to say I've probably had a lot of Czech beers. We've been here for four months. We both enjoy beer. Yes, definitely. I mean, I like it. Um... I can say because we know it's brewed by Pilsner. I think this is their uh, their take on a beer with a bit of a lighter taste, right? It, it's not quite as strong in flavor as Pilsner. Or as skunky. Or as skunky, yeah. That skunkiness is not quite there. It feels a lot lighter, a lot smoother. Um, Do you, it's got yeah. a nice, nice amber kind of tint to it. Do you think there's some sort of uh, purposefully, uh, like purposefully, purpo purposefully making the Pilsner Urquell, Urquell taste better than this beer because they're made by the same company, and obviously yes. they want the Urquell to be the top, the yeah, top of the line. Yeah, and this is cheaper. This okay. is cheaper. That makes yeah, yeah, that makes perfect sense then. Yeah. All right. Yeah, what do you think, Chad? I, I like it. Smooth finish. Oh wow! Um, look at that. <laughs> what a smooth finish. These are professional words. That's, that's right. I don't know. It's got a it's got a good strong taste undertones. To it. <laughs> Let me take another sip. 
Can you identify the hops and the malt that they used? <laughs> <in this> <laughs> Believe it or not, I cannot. It's it's good though. It it goes down real smooth. I've I've always been a fan of Gambrinos. Um, there's a the, my favorite bar here in Komutov has it on tap and it is delicious on tap. Um, we may uh, make our way there tomorrow evening. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's got a good taste. I will say though, for some reason. It's kind. Of, it's a little counterintuitive. So it's it's darker in color than a Pilsner Urquell, mm-hmm. but I think it's definitely lighter in terms mm-hmm. of taste and finish and everything like that. Yeah, hmm. I would comment one more thing on this beer and say because here in the Czech Republic, beer is so important when it's paired with food. This seems like a very good beer for drinking solo, drinking on its own. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, whereas Pilsner or Quill is more of like a pub beer, like drinking it with That's food. That's good consumer advice right there. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I could drink this with or without food. I think a Pilsner is definitely, Pilsner or Quill is definitely great with food. Okay, especially with that uh, Czech um, sausage. And what else do they have? What, what's, what else? What's like Svichkova, a... Goulash. Sure. <laughs> all, all those things. All of the above. <laughs> right. It's well, ex- uh, we actually had uh, we had um, Rizek, which is the Czech word for schnitzel, for dinner tonight. And we actually had a Pilsner Urquell with dinner. and It, it was it, so good. Yeah, it was delicious. Paired with the, the schnitzel and the french fries. Oh, nice. Delicious. That does sound really good. I'm, I'm jealous. Uh-huh. You just got to come visit. Problem oh, solved. So I put up a price alert a long time ago to see prices... For flights to the Czech Republic to Prague, mm-hmm. and they just never came. And then all of a sudden, one came randomly a couple days ago. Then that's then they haven't come since. But the flight was like six hundred and fifty dollars round trip, which I did that, not think was ooh, bad. That's a steal. If you yeah. can get one for that cheap, you let me know, and I'll pick you up at the airport. I, I, I'm I'm I don't remember when it was. So that's the I, but like I just randomly put it in. But I need to I need to look more into that. But yeah. Um, I, oh, uh, shit, I just locked my phone. v uh, me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that is pretty great. On the, uh, on the, so great job on the uh, beer reviews. Thank you very much. Uh, but I think it's about that time. Ooh, I think it is about that time. Um, and so, go ahead. Well, go ahead. I, 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 my, my plan here is to do something a little different. Okay. So I have two Russian untranslatables. Ooh, but for the right. sake of everyone here, I, I would like to give you the um, literal and have you tr- say it in Russian. See if you can translate it, and then we'll like we can, and then I can read it to see how close you were to what they uh, what they said. Oh God, can, I, can this I, can is I, under can pressure. Can I warn David that Jared gets pure joy in putting you on the spot? Oh so God, I'm, because I get I, oh my rest <laughs> because Jared and I we used to be walking down the street in Vienna, and he pointed at the most random thing like windowsill. And be like, how do you say that in German? <laughs> I never, You're a German teacher, I never Chad. I, like, I, I cherish our friendship and that I get to have a, a German teacher as a friend and I like uh, picking your brain. I'm sorry you I do. find you so smart and We're not walking dictionaries, Jared, <laughs> but we, we can try it out. We can I only do have, have a check on translatable as well. You don't have to. That's the thing, though. I, I'm, do you, uh, well, okay. Well, let me, let's do one. Okay. Now Chad gave this I'm whole nervous. disclaimer. Now it's this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> no need to be nervous. It's all good. Okay. Well, actually, as soon as I start this, I realize it might be a little tough because <laughs> I'm looking at the words. <laughs> and I think if I was thinking if this was in German, I was like, why would I ever know how to say this, these words in German? Oh, we can do the second one first. The first one's pretty difficult. Uh, to grab someone's eggs. Hmm. Interesting. So eggs is yaitza. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, I see that. <laughs> hmm. To How do you grab say someone's it? eggs? Um, well, uh, Pri- maybe nesti. Uh, what if I said viziat? Viziat. Okay, yeah. To take. Okay. Viziat. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, see, this is useful to have. Uh-huh. <laughs> So it's not to grab someone's balls it's, or eggs. It's to take someone's <laughs> okay. eggs. Not balls. Yeah. We're not talking about balls here. That was my bad. <laughs> but but that is, uh, it's the same word in Russian for eggs and balls. That makes sense. That's usually how yeah. they do it. That's the same in Spanish and German yep. as well. Yep, exactly. Uh, so it's vizyatsa yatsa. Is that how you'd say it? Yes. Vizyatsa yatsa. Okay. Vizyatsa yatsa. And that's to grab someone's eggs. Have you ever heard that one before? I have not heard that one before. Okay. What do you think it means? Hmm. 
I have no clue. I'm Chad, uh, maybe maybe I'm I would think it means to grab someone's balls would no, be my th- first these reaction. Are idioms. These are it's, I feel, I feel <laughs> it's like not it's, literal. <laughs> isn't it isn't it kind of like the way we use it in English when like somebody says like like she's got you by the balls? Uh <laughs> no, no. For a second I thought you had it. No. No, it means to uh to make someone feel scared. Oh, interesting. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I interesting. wonder why that has anything to do with eggs. Well, I th- I think maybe they're all I think they might be talking about balls. And I think if someone just gets grabbed by the balls un like unprovoked or or like and you're like oh, what's about to happen here to my balls, that could make <laughs> someone feel scared. Yeah. That's fair. That's just that a guess. I, you know, I don't yeah. I that's, does, that, it, I would also say that because Russians off almost always when they're talking about yaitsa, aside from the grocery store in the kitchen, that's what it has <laughs> to do with. Uh, okay. Do they do they talk about their balls a lot over there? Well, I mean, just as much as the average guy does, I guess. Okay. I don't want to be put into that category, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. I don't blame you. I feel like I keep ball talk to a minimum, but I know what you, you mean. Um. Chad, do you have any, or do you have any untranslatables, David? I have a Czech one. Oh, David does as well. Yeah, well, Russian or Czech? I have a, I have a few idioms. I don't know that they're untranslatable. Chad, well, we'll mess- find out. He's fucking with our branding right now. This is, uh, this is. Oh, he's good. <laughs> if anything, it's my fault, my dude. Okay. I just told him you know. Russian idioms. So here we go. Give us some idioms. Yeah. Okay. Untranslatables. Give us an untranslatable. Right. Don't give I'll, it, Chad. So. <laughs> hmm. I'll start. I'll start with uh, the first one I thought of. Okay, I'll say it in Russian, then I'll say what it literally means. Yes, and then I'll let you guess. Perfect. Okay, okay so in Russian it is первый блин всегда комом, which means the first pancake is always a lump. Does that have anything to do with the fact that you put all the syrup on the top and it a uh... <laughs> and you, none of the syrup ever gets to the pancake sender, so you have to mm-hmm. always lift up each individual one and pour for that layer. I think I think so. That would be my guess, but oh, that's, that's not how they use guess. it. Okay, because that always. So, how do you me. think they use it? The first pancake is always a lump. Is that like you? Like there's always like a learning curve when you start something. Yes. New? Yeah. Ooh, hit that ham for horse. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Nice. Okay. I like, I like that. that. Yes. So one. the first one, the David. first try is always, you know the hardest. The hardest, right? You may not succeed, but you good you one. make more pancakes, right? And they're better. Yeah. They're not yeah. lumpy, Jared. Yeah. Oh, or maybe it has something to do with Oh, I take all of that back. And I get it. It has to do with flipping the pancake. And whenever you and it's always hard to flip a pancake, and so the first couple ones you flip, you're always gonna mess it up, and it's gonna, it's not gonna be a clean flip, so they might be lumpy. That's where it probably comes from, not the syrup thing. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not the syrup thing for sure. Okay, so second one is, uh, bis platni sir tolka v Is sir cheese? Yes, it is cheese. Is whole yeah. girl? Oh. Uh, no. Oh damn. No, Sid I was is also just about to check. give you a ham horn, but when you said no to that, I was like, I gotta take it away now. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so it means free cheese only exists in a mouse trap. Oh, I like that one. I think I know what it means, but uh, I have Jared guess. I, I mean, like good, like good things don't come easy. So, like if if there's something that's handed to you, it's not like it's either. It's such it's like don't just like trust free things. Is how I would take it, where it's like you have to work for stuff. Jared hit the horn. Oh, nice. Great. Yes, that's exactly what it means. Like okay. nothing is truly free. Right. Okay. That does sound like a, a Russian idiom. I can un- see now you got me messing it up. That does sound like a Russian untranslatable. Is uh, yeah, I can imagine that. So it does sound like uh, your pronunciation is very good. How, Thank you. How um how how tough was it to is it to adjust from like you know your American speak to uh, Russian, so you mean like I'm I'm saying an American sentence fast and then I throw a Russian word in there and then go back to English? How, no, I mean like I that? would say more like like how, how hard is it to pick up the uh, that the Russian that accent? Accent. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, 
Pretty difficult. I mean, I think it only came after my third year of studying where I was in St. Petersburg. Did you, uh, you, you how long did you, st- uh, we need, all right, sorry, I have so many questions. Um, all right, all right, all right. Well, Do you here, have any interest labels? Let's, let's save it. Let's okay. move on to the main segment. Let's save it. Okay, so you studied abroad in in, um, in, in St. St. Petersburg? St. Petersburg. Or, yes. Or it seems like they just call it Peter? Peter, yes. That's the For, shortened version is Peter. For um, for how long? So I was there from August to December, so five months. Okay, 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 okay. I gotcha. Um, my first thought was, if someone was were learning Russian, would is Russia the only option they have for studying abroad? Absolutely not. Um, I'm sure that's like a good question. That's, that's a good FAQ. question. Jared. I feel like that's an FAQ on the study abroad website. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. I know. I know just as many people that went to a different country to study Russian language and Russian culture uh, than Russia. So, because Russia is such a big country, uh, Russia and the Soviet Union have such a huge, you know, historical footprint. Mm-hmm. Um, you have countries like uh, Kazakhstan. Kyrgyzstan, uh, what, Ukraine, where there's lots of people who speak Russian, lots of people who are culturally Russian. And then you have a lot of countries like, say, Estonia that has cultural Russians and even Russians that nowadays are moving to that country. Uh, so you can find Russian speakers there. Uh, there's various colleges and communities where Russian is the primary language outside of Russia. I mean, even in New York City, you have Brighton Beach, right? Have you heard of Brighton Beach in New York no. City? It's a strong Russian community there. Okay. Uh, lots of Russian speakers. So there's there's Russians everywhere. So you could theoretically study abroad in Brighton Beach, New York, is what you're telling me right maybe, now? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I, I haven't heard of For a program, but I'd be, I'd be interested. To, <laughs> yeah. I'd okay. be interested to know if there is some sort of Russian language program there. I'm sure. Well, I'm sure if it's that... Um, and like that infused into the community they, they probably at least teach it in schools i would imagine oh, they yeah. Have, oh yeah i'm sure there's no shortage of finding russian teachers to teach in schools there definitely yeah so yeah definitely you can go many places were you um, con- were you considering any other uh, anything other than russia i was i was strongly considering a program in uh, almaty kazakhstan okay which is a very nice city i've heard okay what how did you choose uh peter so I chose Peter mainly because oh, I also fun. studied uh, history. It was fun to say, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's super fun to say. Peter. Yeah, and it's so much shorter. St. Petersburg, Peter. You know, because yeah. uh, I, I, when I was um, like lo- doing research on St. Petersburg, I was like, there's no way that they're saying St. Petersburg every time uh, with like, people that actually live there. Like, it's too long. It is, yeah. So yeah. anyway, how did every- you choose uh, Peter. Uh, so I love history and Russian culture and Russian music. And really, um, I'll just go ahead and break it down. You know, you've got St. Petersburg and Moscow. Moscow is the political center, business center. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very big city, very busy. And St. Petersburg is more the cultural capital, you know, the arts capital, the place mm-hmm. with the history and and uh, the really nice architecture. I mean, there's great architecture in moscow as well but if you really want to get into the culture and the music and those sort of things st petersburg is the place to go it's better for the uh, for the young people for the uh, oh yes yeah that makes sense i i I saw somewhere that um st petersburg has a very high number of coffee shops it does yes and coffee is not actually that popular in russia you have most people that drink tea uh, but compared to the rest of Russia, yes, St. Petersburg has a lot of coffee shops. And correct me if I'm wrong, David, but I remember you telling me that uh, St. Petersburg is kind of known as being a, a, a hipster city. Yes, yeah. So there's a phrase in Russian now. It's called Petersky hipster, which means a Petersburg hipster, right? Oh, interesting. Um, and it's to describe the artsy <laughs> people in St. Petersburg. Because if you go to some other places in Russia, you know, people... Especially in wintertime, you know, often tend to wear darker clothes. You may walk down the street and think, you know, people tend to, you know, dress in the same way, have the same sort of fashion sense. And you go to St. Petersburg and everyone has their own unique sense of fashion. Um, and they're now, very artsy. I notice you're not wearing a flannel like Chad and I. Would you consider yourself <laughs> a fashionista? 
Uh, definitely not. <laughs> I, I am just, this is just an odd day for me. I he usually up, has a flannel on. I which usually is have a flannel on. That. Today I woke up and said, I'm feeling like, you know, being a little creative today. And so I put on a gray sweater. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Very nice. Um, okay. So when you, that was your, was that your first time um, in a Russian speaking country? It was, yes. How, how um, terrified were you? That's a leading question. <laughs> I was I was very terrified. You know, honestly, the first week I got there, you know, I I came in and, you know, I could, I could read Russian decently. You know, I could write it, but my speaking um, was just really, really awful. Uh, and so I was, you know, scared to talk to people. Right. And it's the first time I really, you know, seriously studied abroad. And... Uh, I was like my first week. I was afraid to go out of the house. I was, I was, you know, <laughs> afraid of social interaction. You know, people are going to identify me as a foreigner. Did uh, you have any like friends through your program, though? I did, I did, right? But the city, the city is quite big. Okay. Um. So I, I wasn't super close to it's, any it's of them. Not, you couldn't just easily get to any of them. No, no. We okay. all lived in different places. What um like what what were people telling you about about um either either what were people warning you about Russia or what were people saying to you before you went there? I feel like you got a lot of annoying comments before you left telling people you're going to go there. Yeah, so I mean the first the first question which I, you know, honestly I was a bit annoyed with was why would you go to Russia, right? Cuz people yeah. still kind of have this cold war mindset, you know, right. they think Russia is a terrible place, um which is absolutely false, right? It's I I really liked Russia. Um I and I made great friends and there's really some great people there. Uh but you know, th there's still this mindset um that I think some Americans have that, you know, it's a dangerous place, you know, Russians are the enemy, things like that, mm -hmm. um, which is absolutely false. Um, and so I got a lot of that. And uh, a lot of people talked about the, you know, sort of xenophobia, you know, that, you know, Russians, some Russians really don't like Americans, that if they find out you're American, that they won't like you or something like mm -hmm. that. Did you uh, which I ran into a few times, but overall, I'd say you know that's that's not the case for most people. And and for the times that you did run into that, like what did you do to kind of circumvent or like cool down the situation? Um, uh, well, one time I remember telling them I was Canadian. <laughs> did that help? And, and, yeah. <laughs> um, which kind of seems ridiculous to me. It seems ridiculous. <laughs> but it's, I get it. it was but I also get it. It was ridiculous. Yeah, but it worked. Um, but you know, most other times, I just said, "Hey, you know, I love Russia. I don't mean any offense or anything like that." Do you and think they were okay with it? That's probably. I would imagine that's the same sort of attitude, or it's coming from the same place as it comes from when you hear that stuff from Americans, like that are warning you before you go there. Like, is yes. that coming from the same, like, antiquated Cold War thinking? Or yes, is it something I more recent? I think so. And I, I have to say that when I... Re it is coming from that Cold War thinking, um, but it's also coming from, I think, uh, some modern-day, what I'd call propaganda in Russia. You know, on the news media, you see things where they're talking about, you know, American politics, what the American military is doing. Uh, things like that, how it's putting pressure on Russia, etc. Um, and I think uh, the times that I did run into xenophobia, it was on occasions uh, where I met people that were from, say, for example, a more rural area of Russia and had less uh, exposure to foreigners. And because of that, um, because they had never, you know, met an American before and, you know, have that media the the both the cold war mindset and today's media where you know they talk about some of the bad things america's doing right um that they were afraid of me and because they were afraid of me they got defensive and uh, then aggressive um but i'd say for most people that's just absolutely not the case they were very uh excited to know that i was american and talk with me i think it's it. also important to mention sorry chad i think it's also important to mention that this was pre this is pre-current administration Yes. This so is I'd be interested to know if it's even exacer like if it's exacerbated now or, or what it would be like now. I wonder if it might even be better now because it seems like Trump and Putin are buddies. Yes, I I've talked to many Russians that like Trump. I, I can They're imagine fans. that. That that makes sense. Yeah, I could see that for sure. 
Now, now, David, you mentioned that you know there were also some people that would seek you out because you were American. What were what were some of the things that they were curious about? You know, did they ask you? I'm sure they had to have asked you why Russia and why are you learning Russian, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Uh, there, there were a number of people that sought me out because I was American, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that there are not very many Americans in Russia, right? Uh, I read something that said at one time there are generally no more than about 600 Americans, like American oh, wow. citizens. That's crazy. Uh, Russia's huge. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Whoa. In Russia. That puts it into perspective. So to find an American there uh, is quite rare. Um, so, so you want to talk about exotic, Jared? Wow, yeah. That's pretty exotic I right mean, there. Like when we were in Vienna and a lot of times in Germany, it seemed like um, like you could, it almost seemed like there was an annoyance with, with the Americans, right. especially since like, oh, our American. cultures really don't mix very well because Americans are loud and... And right, German for sure. are like it, it almost seems like there was a slight like, oh, here we go again. Uh, can't just have a nice quiet subway ride because Americans are around. Um, yeah, so Americans are rare. And, and I think the politics, they wanted to know a lot about the politics um, and what I felt about it. Hmm. I feel like it was I feel like there's a lot more weight on your study abroad experience than one to even like um, Austria or something like, like Chad and I had. Oh, for where, sure. Where they, or one they have, they expect so much more from you, and then there's all these like, and and there's just like, there's just this in, interesting relationship that goes back so long, where it's like this sort of um, love hate relationship with each other, and I wouldn't even call it love hate, but like this weirdly sort of like, I, I don't passive aggressive, I guess it's Cold War, so <laughs> right. But, like, I also feel like for David's case as well, like. He could have been one of the few Americans that probably some Russians have ever met in their lives. Right? Oh yes, I mean definitely. when it's six hundred, yeah. I mean these both of these places I assume have populations of millions. Yes, just yeah. Moscow mm-hmm. and Saint Petersburg alone is what I meant. So like I imagine right. that yeah, most people are not. That, I would not even have imagined that a small of a that that low of a number. My mom used to have to go to Russia every year for her job because they're um, they were owned by some Russian billionaire, their company. And uh, she 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 didn't she didn't hate it. Well, she hated it, but not because she hated Russia. She thought it was beautiful. But once she like had a driver to take her everywhere, and it was just like hotel to like these parties. And she said they drank a lot. And nice. and my mom is yeah, not that's a, what I've heard. Is my mom's not a big yes. vodka drinker. <laughs> She's like, can I just get a glass of wine? They're like, uh, you don't want uh, any shots. She's like, I'm good on the shots. <laughs> yes, Russians are big about their shots and vodka. Uh, vodka, you know, not everyone drinks vodka, but vodka is definitely a preferred drink in Russia. And is right. there anything you can tell us and our listeners if you were to go to Russia in terms of drinking culture? Like what's polite, what's impolite? You know, how, how do you navigate these uh, these vodka-soaked waters? <laughs> Uh, that's a very good question, um, because you can offend a Russian if you don't, uh, you know, treat oh, their imitations no for it. drinking. Yeah. Right. So you generally, I would say before you go to Russia, start liking vodka or at least know how to take one shot of vodka. Okay. Um, and I think some Russians would be okay with you saying you don't drink if you don't drink, but for most Russians, they would... They would probably find a little strange. Um, I would say they're going to offer you some shots, probably vodka. Take the first. And in a formal setting, actually, what you're supposed to do with the vodka shot glass is Mm -hmm. turn it over. That means you do not want any more. If you put it Ah, back upright. They're just going to keep filling it up. They will fill it up again, and then you have to take the shot, or it's rude. Oh, that's really good to know. Okay. Uh, Or it's Oh, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. But that could get dangerous. <laughs> that could it gets especially very if dangerous. you're an American. How can you keep forgetting an American that doesn't think about it too? Or it's like, oh my god. Yeah. So did you have to, like, was was it an adjustment? I mean, you're in college, so I, I don't know. How, I don't know what your drinking levels are, but most college people are at least slightly prepared for unnecessary levels of drinking. Yeah, um, I would say the drinking. I would actually say if we're talking about American colleges, the drinking culture in Russia with Russian university <laughs> students is not much different. Okay. Um, I have, just to throw it back to the Czech Republic here, uh, the Czech Republic, as I'm sure you've talked about, you know, has a, 
a rich culture of drinking beer. You know, people like to go to the pubs and drink beer. Russia, I feel like the drinking culture is more often centered around parties and, you know, right. drinking shots at parties and similar things that you do at an American party. So they're uh, okay. So I, they're, they're, their drinking culture also lends itself more to the partying because it's like quick shot than back to the partying rather than check it's where, where it seems more of a sit down and drink beers all night or whatever. Yes, that absolutely. I yeah. think so. Yeah, I prefer to sit down and drink beers all night. I don't. Wanna, I, d- I yeah, do too. Well. <laughs> did did I think you? We're all on the same page there. <laughs> so did did um was that a disappointment with the nightlife side of it? Because that that's really the main thing. Because that kind of honestly, even for me, in Austria, it's it's a kind of a mix of both. There's obviously the sit down and drink all night, but there's also plenty of opportunities to go party all night. And a lot of our study abroad friends were seemed to be more of the my my roommate was a drinker per, like sit down but a lot of them were like go to the club people and I hated that and yeah. um, it, I I often found myself like doing the pregame with them and being like all right see you guys I really don't want to go to this club like I really don't want to go and just going home after that yeah I would say the same um, I'm not much of a club person either there are a few clubs in St Petersburg. Um, but there, there are a few bars as well. You can find beer, right? You can mm-hmm. definitely find right. beer. How is the beer there? Uh, not good. <laughs> <laughs> it they is very high. don't spend much time focusing on it, but you can find it. It is very low in quality and very high in alcohol percentage. Um, it's, it's, so it will get you drunk for sure. So even I was, it's because they're, is it because their culture is so centered around the vodka that like the beer, even like your. Like it just seems like this is it's just not what they're used to. It's like this slow process. <laughs> it's just not a priority. Yeah, right. I, actually, it's just there's a different a, way of doing it. I guess in the '90s, when Russians, you know, had more exposure to beer, beer came to Russia. Uh, I mean, it was always there, but you started to get more variety. Um, a lot of Russians started drinking beer because they associated vodka with, like, you know people of a lower class it was considered you know not proper or or low class if you will to drink russia so a lot of russians who think highly of themselves um so drink. the hipsters and peter the hipsters and peter <laughs> like beer so you can find beer this is ipa and peter yeah <laughs> yeah it's the ipa <laughs> um what's the percentage usually of beers in russia oh i'd say oh Wow. Is it um, 16 degrees? It's at least 7%. Okay. And higher. Many freggies. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's aggressive. I mean, for, for like the average, that's aggressive. Yeah, honestly. it's pretty high. So, so tell Jared about the, about the fish card. The fish card. That one card you had for the bars? Oh, okay. Do I have it with me? So. so yeah, go ahead. Do you have it? Can you show this? Oh yeah, can you we show might, this? We might have to get can a picture of that eventually. Podcast? Oh, that is a cool so, looking. Uh, that is a cool looking card. So this is my uh, Killfish Bar card, and there was a bar uh, not far from where I lived. And at this bar, it's called Killfish in English. They have it written in English. Killfish Discount Bar. Okay, is the official name for it. Um, and. Uh, it was a bar close to my house, and mostly students would go there. You know, I want to, you know, message my buddies and say I'm going to the bar. I would just head there about 8 o'clock on a Tuesday and know that they're going to be there. <laughs> on a Tuesday. Yeah, on a Tuesday. Um, and so this was my card. You know, you had to pay like a regular price for the very high alcohol beer and vodka shots without the card. But when you had the card, it's much cheaper. Okay. So and and they like loaded points onto your card. So if you bought, I don't you know, you get like a ten, free one after. Yeah, so many ten beers, you get a one beer free or something. And is that like common that. in a lot of places in Russia, or just this one place? Um, yeah, I've never seen I anything think like that before at a bar. Yeah, like I've seen that concept before, like a grocery store. <laughs> yeah, but I've never seen that at a bar before. I I hadn't either. Uh, yeah, I there's another I. I've totally forgotten the name of it, but there's another bar in St. Petersburg with the same concept where you have a card. Um, but it's mostly in Russian cities. You wouldn't find it in like a small Russian city. Okay. Sure. Right. Makes sense. Yeah, the bigger the bigger places. I mean, it's probably expensive to do. You probably have to at least have a good enough like customers coming in and out to make it worth it, I would assume. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that would make sense. So I've got a question for you, David. Um, obviously, life in Russia was, I'm sure, a, a culture shock for you. But what about, you know, what about learning the language? Like, how, how much would you say that your Russian improved? And, and, you know, how did you overcome kind of that initial language barrier and anxiety to meet people and, and talk? Because, you know, I felt that way since I've been in the Czech Republic. Um, so, so what are some things that you've been doing or yeah. that you did? So I guess I'll start out with a comment on the study abroad program, and, and then I'll answer your question. So when I was looking at the study abroad program, uh, one thing I, I had heard all these stories of people that they went somewhere and like they studied with mostly Americans and it was mostly English that they spoke. And I said, you know, I really want to go somewhere where I'm actually going to be speaking the language the whole time. So that's why I chose this program. And all of my classes were with Russian students. That's uh, intimidating. Yeah, it was it was definitely scary. Now, one of the classes was in English, so it was kind of interesting having me the only native English speaker. I feel like the king and of the, the world in that one. Yeah, I felt I felt <laughs> like the king of the world. <laughs> right. I'm David. The, the, the professor would it was funny. The professor would ask me questions, you know, specifically me because I was the English speaker. Well, your English is better than his, I assume. It, w it was. And then he told me to go write it on the board. <laughs> and then I'd write it on the board. You're teaching and, him. And for example, the word would be honor. Uh huh. And, he'd, and I'd write it on the board. He said, oh, David, wait. No, no, no. Write it the British way. <laughs> so uh, I had to add a U. Right. So um, that, is that how they, they teach the British way with S's and U's and stuff? I think I think uh, at least the past twenty years they've been teaching more of a British version yeah. of English, but American English is becoming more and more uh, popular. So uh, <laughs> I chose this your program. American English on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. If you want to learn how to spell it, this is how you sure. spell it. <laughs> yeah, that's what this I should have said. I know how to write it. <laughs> I don't know what it would have done to my grade, but I should have said that. Worth it. Worth, worth it. The American worth it. fails the uh, English class in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you fail American English? Yeah. Right. So, um, so I had, a, you know, I was in these class with all these Russians, and you know, I became great friends with some of them. They invited me to all sorts of stuff. Um, and it was there that I got to, you know, really speaking Russian, really having informal conversations with them, talking about everyday things. Um, and it and it was a bit of a baptism of fire for sure. Like uh, baptism by fire. What is it? Bap by fire. Baptism yeah. by fire. Um, you know, me having this reading and writing experience, but no real speaking experience because I didn't have a native uh, professor at my university they were yeah, they were scary. all american professors that had taught russian so i mean they knew it but like I it's didn't a get totally to different with, uh, it's still yeah. totally different i think yeah and so it, it was baptism by fire speaking to them but once i got past it you know a few weeks in i was able to speak with other people you know go to the go to the killfish bar with my killfish card mm -hmm. and speak with some russians and by the end of my time there, it was, it was um, I'd say my speaking ability improved threefold. So what would be some tips for our listeners out there if they were to go not only to Russia, but just study abroad in general? What would be some tips that you'd give them? Because as you mentioned, you started learning Russian in college, mm -hmm. right? So Jared and I um, had had previous German experience before we studied in right. college and then went to Austria. But I think there's a lot of students out there who start learning a language in college and realize the benefits of study abroad and want to study abroad. So what are some tips you would give them? Yeah, so honestly, the first one is uh, what I mentioned about the study abroad program. If you're, if you're having trouble choosing a study abroad program, um, I would say... You know, no matter the program, go with one that's really going to put you into the culture and into the language. Um, I would always discourage a program where the majority of your exposure is to, you know, your own culture. Say if you're on a program um, and you're only talking to Americans. Yes, of course, you're going to talk with Americans. You're going to need that, you know, base um, and those American friends that you can speak with and share your experiences. That's important. But that shouldn't be your only experience. You should be interacting with the people in the culture. Mm -hmm. um, along that cultural note, um, before you go there, you know, 
familiarize yourself with the culture, um, make a real effort to know, you know, what is the cultural norm? What are the cultural norms? What's right? What's wrong? And when you get there, continue doing that, you know, really jump into So it. can you give us some of those cultural norms, either that you researched before you went or that you learned while you were there? For example, mm. the vodka thing. Did you learn that before you got there or the hard way? <laughs> I had heard it, but it's a lot different from when you hear it to when you're in someone's flat and right. they off, they're offering you shots. And the next thing you know, you're on the couch um, <laughs> and it's 8 a.m. And it's 8 a.m. the next morning. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, like I don't there's there's lots of um, interesting examples. Um, some are like superstitions like. Uh, here, this one even applies to the Czech Republic. Um, when you buy flowers, a lot oh, of yeah, Russians one, love flowers. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people buy, a lot of men buy flowers for their wives, girlfriends, moms, whatever. Um, always give an odd number. Because um, even numbers are for funerals. Even numbers right? are for funerals. So like things like that, and then and then bigger things such as you know how you should act on public transportation, um, and maybe even like political and historical sensitivities. Right, you know, be respectful when talking about saying Russia World War II, because um, Russia lost I think around ten percent of its population in World War II, which is huge. So are you saying if I go to Russia, I shouldn't wear a Back to um, back. Two times consecutive, <laughs> yeah, World War Two or World War Champs. Because I've that seen Americans worst, wear those shirts. That is the yeah, worst those goddamn shirts are so shirt. shitty. I, yeah. I think a Russian would be, I think if, well, if you wore that shirt around some places in St. Petersburg and a Russian understood it, you you could stand a chance of getting in a fight. I okay. fully support that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Me too. Those shirts are so horrible. Like, yeah, really, you got to brag so about... Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, they are. They really are. So what, anything else? Superstitions or, or just cultural things? Um, you know, always be open. I mean, that's that sounds general and cliche, but always be open to people's experiences, right? Um, and people's... You know, get make a real effort to get to know someone. And when I say real effort, I mean uh, like my, you know, I grew up in southern Missouri. It's it's the culture of it is very is uh, it's similar to the culture of the south. We're kind of in the border between the Midwest and the mm -hmm. south. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so and politeness is a big thing, right? And when I got to Russia, I I, I thought people were being rude to me because, okay. you know, they wouldn't smile and, uh, you know, they wouldn't inter interact with me in a certain way that an American would. Uh, but then I realized it's just a cultural difference and then I got to know them and ask them questions um, and get to know them personally and found out, well, I'm, I'm being a little closed-minded myself by only looking at it with a very right. American lens. Sure. And a lot Did of people find that um, Southern and Midwestern friendliness, like, phony. And it's like, yeah. like, yeah. Why, like you're pretending to be friendly to someone almost. Where it's like, no one's this nice. So even Absolutely. It sometimes annoys me, right. to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so did you like did you smile at people in Russia? Like what did you do? <laughs> Just walking on the street. Uh, I did you it. Mean? I did it first and I got <laughs> hey. a lot of weird looks. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey, How you what are you doing? Uh, How you How doing? doing? <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I find Dina, myself doing you know? in the Czech Republic. Like I'll I'll look at people and they'll make eye contact with me and I'll start to smile and then like I'm like, oh yeah, I'm in the Czech Republic. Hey, like, check maybe yourself. I shouldn't yeah. yeah I got to check myself before I wreck myself. That's for sure. <laughs> I know. Uh, I know. Um, but yeah, like I smiled at a lot of people and they thought it was really strange, right? Because um, St. Petersburg is a big city. Um, you pass people on the street who you'll never, ever see again, right? And, and Russians often consider that a little weird. You know, why am I smiling unless something's funny? Right. Um, <laughs> I feel so, like that's yeah. the same in the Czech Republic. Yeah. They save their smiles for more genuine moments. Yeah. Which yeah. funny how funny like a clown. <laughs> uh, um, in um, do you kind of? I feel like you kind of blend in too to uh, like I uh, to uh, in in Saint Petersburg as far as um, you have the yeah, darker hair. Yeah. Did you hair. blend in? Um, as, yeah. As, 
Are there? I any? mean, I, I, I Russians thought I was a Russian until I opened my mouth. Well, yeah, that's sure. true. Okay. I guess it doesn't that's take fair. long for them to realize that you're not. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember I would. So actually, this is an interesting uh, thing to note. When which I should have brought up when we talk about coffee shops. There are things similar to coffee shops in St. Petersburg called anti cafes. Do you know what an anti cafe is? Sounds real nope. hipster. No yeah, idea. it is super <laughs> hipster. So it's a cafe. It's like more. I'd say more like a hookah lounge or something like that, where you have hookahs, you have snacks, food, and you have like TVs with video games and things. Oh, that sounds board awesome. Games, and you pay for time. You do not pay to do. You know, you not you don't pay to like use the Xbox. You right. pay for your time at the cafe. That sounds fun. Yeah, it was really fun. But anyways, I'd walk into one. You know, me and my me and my friends, my Russian friends, and an American friend who like spoke Russian really well, and then me uh, at the time, and we'd walk in. You know, talk to the person asking for a table, blah blah blah. I'd say, you know, привет. I say, you don't understand Russian. I said, yes, I understand Russian, but you know, they just heard the accent, right? Mluvete anglitsky. <laughs> that's that's my that's, go-to. <laughs> speaking speaking of uh, Russian, uh, David. I was hoping you could teach us and the listeners a couple of just simple, useful Russian phrases. Yeah. Um, how 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 much can I swear? You can uh, say whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. Yeah. This is we got that parental advisory yeah, label. Yeah, we, we have a little so. e on our uh, on iTunes. <laughs> That's right. Can I can I just say? Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't спасибо thank you? Yes, спасибо is thank you. Do you know any other Russian, Jared? Uh, привет. Uh, I said babushka. That hello? That's grandma, right? Yeah, yes, привет is hello. Mm-hmm. Um, da. Da, yep. Uh-huh. Is yes. Uh, niet. No. Is no, yes. Um, I think that's all I got. Uh, wait, I'm trying to think of it here. Uh, Rachman taught me some Russian. Uh, oh, yeah, he did. In, in undergrad. Um, oh, yeah, we, he was from... Uh, Kogdela. Kogdela, yeah, how are you? How are you? Okay, and Har- Harashok is Harashok good. Harashok is good. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. All yeah. Right, so what are some useful... Before we get into the swear words, what yeah, are no, some... I, what are I, some I mean, kidding. I think those are the most useful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, in any language. That's that's just not Russian. That's how American do you say, How do you say Czech. please? Please? Pajolsta. <laughs> so, <laughs> ooh. so that's a, that's getting, a very that's a right important there. one, right? <laughs> can, can, so, you say, can you say that? I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Pajalsta. 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 Okay. Okay. And so, uh, like Czech, when you ask a question or you're asking for something, say from a little stand on the street or a restaurant or whatever, um, you know, you don't need to say, like in American English, um, I would like, you know, may I have whatever. May I get? Okay. Uh, can I get? Uh, you just say what you want and then Give please. Give me. Pas- Okay. Give me blank pajalsta. Okay. Um, so it's a very important phrase. So how do you say that? Give me. Uh, I would just say the name of the food. Name of the food. The okay. name of the food in pajalsta. Okay. So, gotcha. So, they, gotcha. so they're really all about just cutting out the pleasantries. Yeah. Because there's a whole lot of how are you, good, you, at a, like at a store in, in, uh, in America. And so they're just like, we don't need to do all of that. Yeah. Just tell I mean, me what you, you want. You can say, I would want... Right, they're not going to be like. Yeah, we tell. Um, I would want something, but it's it, it's really just the same if you just say the name of the food. They wouldn't find um, that odd that if you just say the name of the food and please. No. Okay. Totally normal. Okay. Yeah, that that really does make me think about a lot of the un, not. I don't want to say unnecessary, but a lot of the pleasantries that we have in America, because that that would be considered rude. I would say. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And I and I remember coming back to the U.S. Um, and saying a few things at, at restaurants, um, such as in Russia, you always ha- and this is the way in the Czech Republic too. You always have to ask for the check, mm-hmm. check please. Yep. And I remember wanting to, you know, being in the U.S. and needing to to you know get out of there fast. And I'm like, can I have the check please? And and the and the waitress kind of looked at me like, okay, <laughs> I'll pay you the check I'm, when I'm ready to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so things like that, and let's see other useful phrases. You said babushka, mm-hmm. uh, which is grandma. Uh, this is a very important word because when you're walking on the street um, or you're in public transportation or something, 
Um, the babushki, the grandmas, are often not hesitant to give you their opinion on how you're acting. So say, for example, you're being loud on the bus or, I don't know, you're walking somewhere where you shouldn't or you're sitting somewhere where you shouldn't or not dressing how you should. The to that grandmas, level? How should yes. you be dressing? Uh, well, if it's winter, like warm, right? So uh, even oh, if you... So they're not going to like you, comment on your halter top. No. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Well, maybe. I don't know. Um, But say you you lived, uh, you know, there's a grocery store underneath your flat and you went outside to go get groceries in the wintertime and it's really cold. So you just have maybe your shirt, your sweatshirt, your, your, I don't know, sweatpants on, but it's, you know, negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit or something, something Russian. (laughs) <laughs> um, and you go outside and there's a grandma in the store and she says, you know, you should be wearing more clothes. What are you doing? You look like an idiot, you know, because you're not wearing enough clothes. And, and you say, oh, but I live right there. And she'll mm-hmm. say, you, you still should put all your clothes on. Mm-hmm. Would you so, say, so, so would you say, you say? Dababushki? You would just you call ignore her? them. Oh. oh, you ignore them? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You just ignore them. Don't 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 take it seriously. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, who are these old who are these old women? Like mind your own damn business, woman. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> couldn't couldn't you just say spasiba babushka? Uh, yeah, are, maybe spasiba and then walk away. Are you allowed to call them babushka or is that rude if you're just calling them grandma? No, is that like actually, just calling a, a, you can, a song grandma here? You can call any older woman babushka. Okay. Okay, that's for a general really? term yes. for like really? ma- was really? that like saying okay. kind of like ma'am for old woman also? Yes. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Good to know. Yeah, cuz yeah, cuz to me it would I would find that odd just calling some ran- just some random old lady grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so so you mentioned in Russia you have to ask for the check like in the Czech Republic. Yes. So how how do you do that in Russian? What do you say? Shot pozhalsta. Shot pozhalsta. Yeah. Shot is check. Ah, okay. Learn some say Russian in, here, how, Jared. How do you say it? How do you say it in, in Czech? Uche prosim, which is literally Czech, please, or platit prosim, like okay. pay, please. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Do you, are you are you better than Chad at um at um Czech? I I would say he is. I would say he is. He's the, the he's Russian, a humble guy. I would say he. The is. Russian definitely gives me an advantage. Because but, right, we're going to Dresden right. tomorrow, so tomorrow is my time to shine. Chad's gonna floss. That's, that's right. <laughs> you want the something? Time, no, I'm good. No, I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you. What do you want? Exactly. No, I don't want anything. <laughs> the whole time, David just gonna be thinking in his head, weird flex, but okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, but, but yeah. I can understand that though. It is like a little like uh, is respite the right word? Like a little like your safe place after just being oh, for sure. generally going around and not being able to communicate that well. One of my favorite things when I'm with David, when we were in Carlo Vivari, there were some Russians by us, and we walked by, and every time someone's speaking a foreign language here that my ear's gotten good enough, I can usually tell when it's Czech. Mm-hmm. But if it doesn't sound Czech and I'm with David, I always, the first thing I ask him is, oh, what's that Russian? <laughs> and so he'll usually like translate some of the things they're saying and stuff. And so that happened in Carlo Vivari, and I just thought it was really cool to have that extra little... By the way, Extra little ear. I love realizing that, like, in a, like here in America, realizing that someone's speaking German and just eavesdropping it on their conversation, even if it's something completely mundane. It's like, yeah. oh, they have no idea that I know what they're what they're talking about right now. What kind of a yeah, crazy I'll meet story. you at the airport at seven <laughs> thirty. Well, well, it's funny you mentioned that, Jared. Do you remember we were in uh, East Lansing? We went out to a bar and we were walking back to my apartment, and we were speaking German. And this girl randomly came oh, up to yeah. us and started speaking German with us. Yeah, I remember that. So it was that. like the same thing. It was absolutely crazy. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cool. But that's the beauty of learning another language, um, mm-hmm. most definitely. Um, yeah, that's that's just awesome. And uh, um, what about um, like the? Are there any like specific sounds or letters that are really difficult for Americans to pronounce in Russian? Oh yes, oh yes. I I wouldn't say there's anything on the level of the Czech. Rz. Rz. <laughs> Shout out. Dobrze. We should have, we should have that as a as a, a soundboard. Yeah. Rz. <laughs> oh, well, the, the, right. the, 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 the <laughs> really good down. word though is um rzeka, which literally means it's a, a water water crescent. Water crest, yeah. Or water crest, um, yeah. But there is one letter, and I won't even say that I can do it right. It usually takes me till the third or fourth try to get it 
Uh, are they about to say shot of vodka? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're not wrong, but um, so it is. There's two like I sounds, like English I. There's the E, and mm. then there's Ui. Ui. And you have to make your Ooh, lips really that, wide geez. when you say it. Ui. E yeah. Ui. I don't want to try. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us an example of like a Russian word with that sound in it? Yes. So, uh, actually, the word for like say you, mm-hmm. the informal you in Czech, it's T. Right. In Russian, it's tui. 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 Oh, that's pretty um, good, Chad. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that was good. Okay. T is Czech, and then tui. tui. You gotta really like stretch your yeah. mouth. Like it's <laughs> it's fun to watch. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying okay. it from this side. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Now, now speaking of Czech and Russian, since they're both Slavic languages, um, I'd like you to enlighten Jared and our listeners um, about about that one number difference we talked about earlier. So Czech and Russian, there's a lot of number similarities, at least what David has told me. I don't speak Russian, so I have no idea. But I, I think the man knows what he's talking about. And so, all right. So this came from my, I think he's now 77 year old. A uh, Russian professor who studied Slavic linguistics at Yale. Um, he really cool guy. So he told me my first year we were going through the numbers, right? Um, you know, one to 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever. And we got to 40. And the interesting thing um, in Czech, you know, the, the, Numbers are, of course, really hard to say. They're really difficult to say, especially, especially with that, you know, stirgy, that just sound. Um, but they're uniform, right? They're, you know, from one to a hundred to a thousand to a million, they follow the same numbers. It's not like French where you have to, you know, throw these weird combinations together mm-hmm. or something like that. It's all, it's, you know, just like English. It, right. it follows the same logic as English. I gotcha. And I think, I believe 40 is... Stritzet, I think. Um, so in Russian, uh, I've, I've been able to say all these Czech numbers because they're similar in Russian. But the Russian number 40 is Surak. It's totally different, unlike all the others. Um, what's it up doesn't with that? follow. What's up with that? Mm. Have you <laughs> done any research so, into why that one number? So the reason my 77 year old Russian professor told me was. Back in medieval ages, you know, um, when hunting furs in Russia, you know, because Russia is this, you know, wild expanse in the north. When hunting furs was big. Uh, they hunted bears with their bare hands, hunt, I know. Yes, they hunted bears <laughs> with their bare hands. And they, they were killing all these beavers. They were getting the beaver furs. And they were like trading in stacks of beaver pelts or furs, whatever you call them. And a standard stack that you'd sell or buy is 40. And so the word for 40, surik, means a oh. pile of beaver skins. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. It's fascinating, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I like that. I and like when that. I've actually told Russians that and they don't believe me. It, like I mean, the it, etymology of the word, and then they go look it up. It's like, oh, wow, p- pile of beaver skins. It definitely so could from. definitely sounds like a wives' tale. Like it sounds like like if I were if my grandma were, were Russian, I can imagine her telling me something like that. I mean, like, all right. I mean, if all right, <laughs> I'll babushka. take your word for right. her. Yeah, okay, babushka. Just ignore her like I usually do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, huh? So, what are some other similarities between Russian and Czech? Are there any, like I know Svoboda, as David actually taught me, means freedom in both yeah. languages. Yes, freedom. What other cognates are there with Russian and Czech that you know of? Oh, there's so many. Like, uh, when I was making cookies with my students yesterday, mm-hmm. tiesto or tiesta in exactly. Russian is dough. Ah. Okay. Yes, dough. So um, words like dough, um, animals, medved, medved uh, is bear. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you notice, can you notice any of those uh, cognates if you're... I mean, I, I assume you you struggle to under like you can't understand conversations, but can you just pick out words and be like, oh, I know that word. I feel like oh, yes. you, I feel like though you do a pretty good job of picking up a lot of stuff in conversations. Yeah, definitely. And I, I've observed him like when we were in Hradets last weekend, 
I was I felt like I was like slowly the water was slowly getting <laughs> over my head like I would understand words and I feel like you got the gist of a lot of it am yeah. I right yeah, oh, definitely, definitely. Um, the Russian helps, you know, studying Czech has, of course, helped. Um, but yeah, I'd say cognates, there's there's enough to where if someone's talking about something fairly simple, I can get the gist of what they're saying. Are there any really dangerous false cognates? <laughs> hmm. There's one I can think of off the top of my head. It's the word uh, miesto. Which so means city, which means in city Czech. in Czech and place in Russian. Ah, okay. Mm. Yeah, okay. and there's another one. This is also a good one. Užasný. It's an adjective. Okay. In Rush, uh, in Czech, it means it's good, okay. like it's wonderful. Uh huh. In Russian, it means it's horrible. Oh, that's like <laughs> oh, the complete opposite. <laughs> right, yeah. There's also David and I were talking about this earlier. There's also a really funny like two words in Czech that if you Mispronounce one of it means completely different. Yeah, ovce and ovce. Ovce is sheep. Ovce is fruit. Mm. So a little, little <sighs> missing syllable, and the sheep becomes fruit. Yep. Or no, an ad, added syllable. Yeah, yeah added, added syllable, syllable, added vowel, and that sheep becomes fruit. Okay. Shout out to Peta. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of uh, speaking of sheep and fruit, what is Russian cuisine? What do they eat over there? Oh, so, a raw question. fish. I they do eat um, some raw fish. A lot of smoked fish in Saint Petersburg, right? Because it's there on the on the Baltic coast. They have mm-hmm. all this sort of mm-hmm. cold water, oh, really this, bony isn't, fish. Isn't Peter a, 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 a like a, a group of islands? So, or, yeah, uh, made so up there there are some multiple islands. islands. Yes, thank you. That's a really good point. So I actually lived on one of the islands, the biggest island. Uh, it's called Vasilyevsky Island or Saint Basil's Island, and the population of this island in Saint Petersburg is 1.1 million people. So this oh. island in this city, it's like all, oh wow, um, okay, it's a huge has, party island right has there has more people <laughs> yeah. than some countries, right? Yeah, um, um, and yeah, there's I think there's five. Four or five islands in St. Petersburg, but Vasilyevsky is the big one. Um, and then it has the mainland with all the canals. So the food. The food. Yes, the food. <laughs> uh, okay, question for you both. You know what dill is, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, what, what kind of foods do you put dill in or on? I'll say this. I remember in uh, college... Rachman, our Azerbaijani friend, um, he made that giant pot of rice, uh, chicken, dill, mm-hmm. and there was some other vegetable-y stuff in there. I don't remember exactly what was in there. But I've, no joke, have been looking for the recipe since he made that uh, almost six really years ago. Good. It was so good. And he put a bunch of dill in there, too. And it was, I don't remember what it was, what it was. But I found what it was called, but I couldn't find any recipes that are the same. Anyway. That's the only yes. thing I can think of that has dill in it off the top of my head. I feel Are like they big on the dill? Jared's the one to answer this one because I don't really cook. Yeah, so Chad, do any of your frozen pizzas have dill on them? <laughs> I sprinkle a little on there, you know, <laughs> add a little, I will zing to them. No, I, yeah, I don't know. So Russians love dill. There is dill on everything. There's dill on dumplings. There's dill in soups, of course. There's dill on pizza. There's dill on Chinese food. If you go to a Chinese food restaurant in Russia, they will put dill on what we would consider, you know, regular Chinese food. They would add dill to it. <laughs> Interesting. So, so you like, get, their salt, like salt pepper dill. Yeah. <laughs> salt pepper or dill. Or dill salt pepper, like it that. sounds like. <laughs> dill, yeah, dill is definitely at the top. <laughs> and then everything else. And dill is just like a like a dried out leaf. Like it's just a little, like, a, is that yeah, all like, it is? Yeah. Yeah, that's like a, what, some, some sort of herb. Yeah. Um, All right. Um, so they are you love a, dill. Are you before you continue? Are you like a, a adventurous with your trying foods? Because Chad and I are not. I like new foods, but within you know the I don't know. It's not some weird part of an animal category. Right. You're not. Right? You're not going to go fear factor with it. I'm not going to go. <laughs> I'm not going to eat any cow cow tongues. I'm not going to eat any uh, cow testicles. No ball are, testicles. No ball. They are no, delicacies ball, ball in testi- Colorado, apparently, or something like that. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, out west. There's, a, there's some word for it. There's an actual yeah, like, um, name some, for it. Isn't it something oysters? 
Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. It's something uh, oysters. I'll, I'll look it up. Bull testicles. Yeah, it's something oy- this is rodeo work, oysters. This is my work computer, by the way. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's something oysters. Jared, have cause... you been watching por- pornography? Uh, Rocky Mountain Oysters. There we go. Rocky, Rocky Mountain, Mountain Oysters. Oysters, okay. Because yeah. I remember being in Montana or Colorado and my uncle asking me back in the day, hey, do you want any Rocky Mountain Oysters? I told him, I don't like seafood. And of course, he cracked up because it's not seafood, but you know. <laughs> I've been to Colorado plenty of times. I don't think I've ever um, seen that. I mean, I haven't been looking for it. But anyway, what are they eating in Russia? They're not, they're not eating bull testicles. Oh, when they're or you're okay. not eating bull testicles. So I, I've yeah. <laughs> oh I've yeah. Ne- <laughs> you're not picky, but you're also not going wild with it. Buck wild. Yeah, with not it. not go- not going ball testicle wild. Bull t- <laughs> <laughs> bull testicle wild. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's that a good t-shirt right there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? Lots of soups. So many soups. So many yeah. soups. And it seems like the Czech Republic has that uh, in common. They, they oh, seem yeah. to be it's big true. on their soups there, too. Um, I've had some good soups while I've been oh, here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they really like pumpkin. We like pumpkin. And all sorts of ground vegetables. What, a, what about the tomato? You got to tell the tomato story. The tomatoes. Or the, the eggs. Your host mom and the tomatoes. Oh yeah, my host mom. I don't know. She so I live with the host family. Uh, a lot of people live with like a lot of the other Americans that were on the program live with whole families, big families. I lived with a single host mom. Her name was Svetlana. Of course it was. Of course it was. By the way, I have a co- I have a coworker. At, she's not a coworker, but she works on my job. She's from Russia. Her name is also Svetlana. <laughs> <laughs> is she from Saint Petersburg? I don't. I don't know. I don't have to ask her. No, how do you, how do you say her. in Russian? How are, are, are you from? Uh, T or V is where are you Russi. from? Atkud atkuda v atkuda t. So it's kind of like Czech yeah. a little. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So where are you from? From where do you come? Mm-hmm. Um. So I live with her, and she was always. Very nice woman, but she was always saying these kind of wacky things, like, you know. Was she a babushka? Would she was definitely a babushka. A babushka. Um, okay. She was always saying, like, she heard some things on TV. Um, you know, Putin kissed a baby and, and adopted 10 puppies today, and she'd tell me about it when I got home <laughs> from school. Um, was she and, is she a big fan of Putin? Yeah, quite okay. a big fan. Um, are, are a lot of Russians big fans of Putin? I would say a lot. Yes, a lot of okay. them. Definitely okay. not all of them. I I had a lot of friends that were very strong opponents. Okay. I can definitely Putin. imagine that also probably in in the hipster communities of Saint Petersburg, people yeah. not being fans of Putin. Yeah, That's true. That's definitely. True. And my my college that I went to, I think, had a very kind of liberal. It, it was kind of a hot spot for you know Russian liberals, I guess you could say, anti anti Putin. Okay, gotcha. Sentiment. Anyways, back to Babushka yeah. Svetlana. So. She one day I come home and you know she f- she always fed me so much food and it was really good but it was so much food I could never eat all of it. <laughs> um, sounds like my kids. Sounds like everyone's grandmother though. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And I come home and she'd make me these salads and I come home one day and there's this like tomato salad thing um, that she's made for me. It looks good and then I notice she's making it again. I'm like Svetlana. I like tomatoes, but why are you making me so many tomatoes? She says, David, <laughs> I saw on TV that if men eat tomatoes every day, they won't get prostate cancer. <laughs> huh. And I'm like, that's, what? And I'm like, that's what? Hilarious. And she said, you, you, told me, you told me your grandpa had prostate cancer, so I thought I'd, I'd make you tomatoes every day. <laughs> so I said, okay, thank, thank you, Svetlana. Shout wow. out to Svetlana. So I was having tomatoes every single day I was there because she oh, so she me actually to stay stuck healthy. with it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How are your balls feel? <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> see, we're see we're talking about it. I told you we would. <laughs> I guess, I've actually I guess heard, you're not wrong. I've actually heard that if you live long enough, uh, prostate cancer is almost unavoidable for for men. Like yeah, I've also I've, I've also, also heard, heard that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of it's just part of being going to happen. A, a human. Yeah. Yep. Um, so what, 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 what are their like a uh, drunchies? Do they do like a duna or, um, like, like, like a kebab late night, late night after, um, 
38 shots, vodka of, shots. Of, of vodka. <laughs> what are what are you uh, what are you eating? So this is actually Besides really for interesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Besides for tomatoes, actually, I keep tom- I kept tomatoes in my pocket, just eating them all the time. <laughs> Take um, the Ziploc bag of tomatoes. <laughs> uh, but actually, really interesting to me, they have uh, in Russia they have all these what they call shawarma. Oh, shawarma. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, and it's ger- I okay. guess in German it's shawarma. Oh, and that's same in America yeah. too. Same, same in America. Yeah, yeah, but in Russian it's shavirma. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, of course it is. Um, and so <laughs> they said it was shawarma, but I've had shawarma in the U.S. before, and it's very different. The, their shawarma is something like a sh- American shawarma. Well, there's uh, dill in it. Turkish, we know that. Yeah, there's dill in it. Uh, there's dill in it. It's something between a uh, American shawarma and Turkish kebab hybrid like it, it's in a wrap right like a kebab would be and you eat it like that but the ingredients are what you'd have in shawarma hmm. okay. and it's quite good um especially especially as drunk food it is very right. good right and, and you have all these little stands around the city that sell it i've heard um uh peter is a pretty cheap city to live in oh yes i mean especially compared to moscow moscow is known to be expensive in russia um oh, okay i have friends that work there in russia they're uh, I have a really good friend who she's an English teacher there, native speaker, uh, and she you know works all the time has has a you know a job that she really enjoys, um, and she says you know it's it's really tough living in Moscow because the prices are so high. But St. Petersburg, on the other hand, uh, compared to Moscow and Europe, is really cheap. Okay, uh, you can you can get by on not a lot. You can. Actually, it's really easy to rent an apartment in St. Petersburg. You can probably rent an apartment for, I don't know, in certain parts of the city, $200 a month. That's good. <laughs> do you, uh, this makes me cry a little bit. Uh, do you um, have plans on going back for like extended would, periods of time? I would love to. I actually, um, I'm thinking about going there next year. Or to okay. another Russian-speaking country, but I'm definitely not sure. When when you were there, did you uh, did you travel around anywhere? I did, uh, and I was also going to say on Russia that is what I recommend, right? So I went to Moscow, had a great time, had How such a there? fun time. Uh, there's a train, there's a speed train that goes between Moscow and Saint Petersburg. It's called Sapsan, which mm-hmm. is the Russian word for a perig- uh, was it peregrine falcon. Right. Okay. You know what a peregrine falcon is? I like know what a falcon is, but not yeah. specifically the peregrine so this, kind. But uh, I, the peregrine falcon, it like dives at 200 miles an hour. Oh, oh cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, yeah. That's a Sounds cool badass. name for a train. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's a badass <laughs> name for a train. Um, and so there's that train, and it takes four hours to go between St. Petersburg and Moscow. Okay. Um, so that's nice. Because they're pretty far away, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't exact know the exact mileage. distance, but it's it's quite a ways. Um, so I went there, but I would recommend, especially if you go to Russia, go to a smaller city because, you know, St. Petersburg and Moscow, they are their own cities. There's a culture of each city. Uh, every, you know, that's where people go. But if you want to, you know, understand the real Russia, get a sense for Russian culture, Russian history, go to a smaller city. I went to a few smaller cities. One that I thought was very interesting was one called Pskov. Um, it's near the Estonian border, and it's this really old medieval Russian city. It has these old medieval walls, and uh, you know you get the real feel of Russia there. You you understand, uh, you know, you see these old paintings of Russia, and it's kind of it's kind of bleak, it's kind of dark, uh, but it's A lot very. Of grays. A lot of grays, a lot of, <laughs> lot of dark greens and browns. Um, but you kind of feel, you know, what I call the Russian soul, right? Right. Um, you feel it there, and it's a really interesting city. And uh, I thought the people there were, were interesting and nice. So I mean, that's, that's definitely, I'd say, probably j- the case for just about anywhere, where it's like yeah. if you really want to understand the culture and the people, you have to get out of the big cities. Because there's just too Absolutely. much... Too much um, Infl- and I say this like it's a quote unquote. I say like it's a bad thing, but this is just how it is. Like there's too much influence from other outside cultures because that's the yeah. place to go. Which obviously is not a problem. But it's just 
it, it kind of dilutes that that uh, that culture a little bit. Yeah, and, and if you want to actually see what it's like, you kind of kind of have to go deep a little bit. Yes, and that is, I'd say that is the case with uh, Saint Petersburg and Moscow, uh, which I love about Saint Petersburg. But real, the real Russia is a must see if you want to understand right. Russian people for right. sure. And speaking of Saint Petersburg. We have a very special song of the pod tonight, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, suggested by David. So, David, can you give us a little bit of insight, uh, the title of the song, what it's about, everything like that? So, uh, the name of the song that I have chosen is by a very famous Russian group called Leningrad, which was the Soviet name for St. Petersburg. <clears throat> so, the song is called Spitrye Pit which means, in Peter, we drink, you know, on the theme of alcohol. Uh, so Petersburg, as we said, is known as kind of a hipster city. It is also known in Russia as sort of a drinking city. There's lots of, you know, the culture is big there. Uh, students love it. And so a lot of people study there, and a lot of people will go there to drink and have a good time. Um, and the song, Peter uh, Pete, and Peter We Drink is all about uh, sort of, you know, it begins, it talks about other cities. It says, um, you know, you can get good pastries in one city. And in Moscow, oh, yeah. you can, you know, because they're all... Get good blow, right? Isn't you, that you, what can get, <laughs> you can get blow or... I don't, I don't know if they say blow or... Stuff to sniff. Stuff to sniff, yeah. yeah, yeah, they, that, does, yeah. The, so they definitely uh, mentioned yeah. cocaine. Stuff <laughs> to sniff, and uh, in Chelyabinsk, which is another city, you can get nice weed or whatever. Um, and then, but it, it ends and it says, but in Peter we drink. And yes. it's all about drinking. Um, and it also references like kind of the hipster culture that I was talking about. It references like the police attitude and the citizens of the you know, Peter Burger attitude of drinking and the laid backness and uh, it, it's really a, a really nice commentary on St. Petersburg as a city and other, you know, Russian social norms. Yeah. So throughout the video it goes through, I, I think five people that are essentially having shitty days at work and they all kind of run into each other and, and just get hammered together and, and, and have fun together. And then Peter, we drink. And this the song made me want to drink so bad. <laughs> oh, when when I was watching this, I, I was like, "This song really makes me want to get drunk." Like it, it, it and um, it almost seemed like a, I mean, you know, if that's how they feel, that's how they feel. But it, it definitely almost felt like a like a stereotype. I was like, "Is this like it's like a the stereotype of what people think of when when yes. people hear Russia?" Yeah, yeah. Like for example, like one, it's all about them just drinking to uh, like to complete excess. But then even like the part where the cop, the police officer joins in on the drinking, it's because uh, he gets hit by a car and the people that hit him then throw him off a bridge. Yes. (laughs) Into 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 the the canal. And I had I had (laughs) some friends that jumped into the canal while I was there. And then Um, he's just like, fuck it. I'm done working. I'm going to go drink. (laughs) Yes. Um, Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I saw things like that happen. You you know, you'd meet random Russians on the street, just as you do in many other places. And uh, you just start drinking with them and having a fun time and getting to know them. Um, And this song, the reason one of the reasons why I chose this song uh, during the first uh, I, I mentioned I had class with a lot of Russians and like the first week they invited me to a house party and they were showing me this Russian music and playing the music and talking about it. Um, and I heard it many times and it was, it was a bit of like a pregame song. You know, we, we'd play it when we know uh, we wanted well, to have that, fun. That makes sense. Cause there's 70 million, uh, <laughs> views on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, so that definitely makes sense. And it is, it is catchy. I found, I mean, I don't, I don't even speak Russian, but I found myself singing along to it. I listened to it like yeah. four times. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a fun song. And by the end of my time there, I was exploring the city more and more. I wanted to see as much of it as I could before I left. Um, and on one of the very last weeks, I went to this flea market that runs every single Saturday of the year. It's called uh, Udelnaya. It's at the Udelnaya metro stop. And I was walking through the flea market in the snow, and there was this guy selling his goods. It was basically just a bunch of knickknacks and old, you know, like Soviet junk. Mm-hmm. Um, and he had a little radio there and he was playing this song 
as all the ba- as all the grandmas, the babushki walked by. He was playing this song and dancing to it, and and it just it was such a Petersburg moment. That's awesome. What um what do you miss most about uh about your time there? Oh, that's a hard one. Yeah, that is a hard one. I, I'll yeah, give I, you two answers. Okay. Um. The, I guess, more unique answer was, you know, sometimes I just walk around the city at 1 a.m. in the morning in the snow as the months, you know, as the as the year dragged on and the days got shorter and shorter. Um, and you just stare up at, you know, some old beautiful Russian church in the snow and just sit there and, and take it all in. And the feel of the city, the soul of the city is really strong. And I'd feel that. And my more cliche, um, but probably primary answer is all the fantastic people I met there and everything I learned about Russia and Russians and Russian culture and but it's a cliche because it's it's true. I mean it is true. It and is for I, sure. so you, for sure. I think I think people would hope that that's how most people come away from their time abroad is 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 not but saying, "Oh my god." I mean, yeah, it's like, "Oh, the churches were so cool with the spirally roofs." Yeah. But it's like that's <laughs> but it's like that really what makes the people is the city, not the yeah. spirally roofs. Yeah. Are exactly. there spirally roofs in St. Petersburg, or is that there just are. a Moscow thing? Okay, there are. Those are cool to look at. I Maybe. hope you become an architecture professor. <laughs> is that is that the proper term? The spirally spirally <laughs> roofs. If it isn't, it should be. So check out our song of the pod in yes. Peter. We drink. Yes. Which will be on our Twitter, Untranslatable One. Check it out. We hope you enjoy it. It's got a great kind of jazzy kind of feel to it. And I agree with you, Jared. Like it's it's hard to not have a sudden impulse to to just start drinking. I was I was telling Chad that I was like this like I'm going to get beer before we start this episode, but I took a nap. Hey, and then bo- I woke both up. are good. <laughs> both are good. And I was like, I woke up and we were I had like ten like twenty minutes, and I was like, oh well, okay, I guess I'm not gonna do that. But I still I, I still kind of honestly is in my head, or it's like man, I still kind of want to drink because of the. It seems like. Um, I, I would I would have thought that um the Russians would kind of uh like not fully embrace that stereotype, but they do, I guess. Yeah, I'd say a lot of them do, but for sure this is a Saint Petersburg stereotype. Okay. Um, okay. Saint so Peters- even within Russia, Saint Petersburg is known as the drinking place. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. I like the song though. It's it great. A great song. Absolutely. Yeah. And the video was hilarious too. Yeah, yeah. Give the video a watch, everybody. It's definitely enjoyable. So I also have a special treat today. Um, this check word of the pod, I think, is incredibly useful. Um, and uh, I'm going to let David take the reins on this check word of the pod um, because he has a special story for it. He also taught me this word, and I have also started to use it in my check vocabulary. So take it away, yes. David. So... One night uh, or one evening, I was with my students um, at a like club event, and uh, we were talking about Czech words. And they said, "Oh, we need to." I I teach in this town called Hradets Kralova, as I mentioned in the beginning. And they said, "Oh, we need to teach you a Hradets word. Everyone in Hradets knows this word." Um, and I said, "Okay, what is it?" And they said, "Murtia." That's Murtia. M M R T and then a E with a hot check, which makes a yeah sound. Murtia. Okay. A little V above the E kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. So I asked them, what's it mean? And they said, we don't know. And you, if you type this in like <laughs> Google Translate <laughs> okay. or some dictionary, it says really. But after asking about the context, the translation of this word, Murtia, means hella. <laughs> Something is, you know, hella whatever. Like hella, hella tight, you mean? Hella tight, you know. <laughs> According um, to um, Chestina 2.0, which is like a Czech online dictionary, Murtia means much, terribly, or too much. But I think hella AKA is a way hella. better. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So hella. hella that's and hilarious. you can use it with literally anything. You could say... You could B-O-T-S say... spicy. Yeah, hella spicy, Martia. I don't know the Czech word for spicy. I don't either. Um, you could say, you could be talking to your friend. Cold? How do you say cold? Chladno. So you could Martia say. Martia chladno. Yeah, Martia chladno. Um, or, or is Martia zima, which means super winter, but it also means cold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> super winter. 
Yeah. Or you could say, you know, Marcia Kamarad. Marcia, you know, hello, hello friend. friend. That's my hello friend or something. Okay. I like that. You can put it with literally anything. Yeah. Um, so Do we it's have to very like useful. that in English? Yeah, it's oh, called hella. hella. <laughs> it's, wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's hella. But I don't uh, use hella, I but, guess. Yeah. Uh, hella is such a, like, a, it's still a very, like, I think it's still a very, like, Northern California word. That's why you got to start using murtia. Just go, yeah, go up guess, to your caucus. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, that, that work presentation was just Make that a Philly exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Philly word. Like John. Murtia yeah. John. People do say that, I, and it always gets me excited when I hear it. I was like, oh, they actually do say that. <laughs> right, for sure. So, yeah, so check out uh, Murtia if you uh, are unsure. It's M-R-T-E with the hot check, and it means... Hella. So there Hella. you go. Useful word, good slang word. I, I'm hoping to also learn some more Czech slang yes. um, as Be we go. Me. That's right. All right. I, I like that I had the Parada. I have that one, David. So I I, I had to add a, a Jared version. The born me. So ex- explain to me briefly why why do you have Parada on the soundboard? So so I just like how it sounds. <laughs> well, it sounds good. And when I I learned this word, this was the check word of the pod eons ago. It seems like in podcasters' time. Yeah. Um, but I was. It was when we when we were first uh, when we got here, and I went to the bank. And uh, the the woman at the, the the bank teller, not even the teller, but the woman setting up my account, got everything to work, and she went parada. And I asked I asked my mentor what that meant. She said, "Great or excellent." And then I signed a couple documents, and she told my mentor, "Yeah, you're you're all done." And so I answered parada. with parada. Uh, there there you go. So so yeah, <laughs> and it's it's a cool sounding word. Um, all right, so I have some special jokes for both of you. Um, David has also not seen these, unless he's sn- snuck a peek at my little notepad here. Um, one of them's an original, one of them's not. I'm going to tell you both of them, and I want you two to guess the original. Okay. A little challenge for you. I hurt so, Chad's feelings here or something, but... Uh. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Um, I know I'm not going to stand up comics, so it's all good. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, joke number one. What does a Russian wife get on her wedding day... That's long and hard. <laughs> I, uh, I can't imagine this is your joke already. This doesn't. <laughs> what to hard. guess? There's so many things. Yeah. <laughs> what, what does a Russian wife get on her wedding day that's long and hard? Are you guys ready for the punchline? Uh, Let's hear it. No guesses before I give it. Um. Uh. I, I have no idea. Just Her give it to us. husband's last name. <laughs> That's yes, good. I love that drop. <laughs> I love that drop. <laughs> All right. And joke number two. <laughs> joke number two. Why don't people like Russian, or is it nestling dolls? Nesting dolls. Uh, why don't people like Russian nesting dolls? <laughs> Any guesses? I don't know. I don't know. Because they're full of themselves. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good. I, I, <laughs> um, I, I think <laughs> I'm actually shocked that those are both like legitimately like making me laugh because that I don't think this has ever happened. Like no, I don't think I, I can never get Jared to laugh. Think song of the, excuse me, I don't think jokes of the pot have ever made me laugh. <laughs> it's if you do laugh, it's a joyous kind of laugh. Um, I'd say the first one was yours. David, what do you think? Which one do you think is the original? Mm, second one. David is right. Number two. Ooh. Beheshki Kluk. That's right. I still think those were both good. I was. I like both of them. What was the first one? Can you just say the first uh, one again First one, what does a Russian wife get on her wedding right. day that's long and hard? Her husband's yes. last name. The other one, why uh, don't people like Rus- uh, Russian nest- nesting dolls? Nesting dolls. Yes. Nesting dolls because they're full of themselves. Did you, um, when you were in, um, those were great, by the way, Chad. Thank you. Thank you. I, the, the, both the original and the non-original were both hilarious. Um, did you, what, what kind of um, knickknacks did you bring back from, uh, from Russia for people? Oh, this is, this is kind of interesting. I, uh-huh. So, one thing, this Killfish bar, the one that I went to every, well... A lot in the beginning, unless as time went on. Uh, this Killfish Bar, the one that I went to, 
in December when I was leaving closed. They closed the location. I don't know if they weren't making enough money or... Um, <laughs> Turns out the card wasn't a great yeah, idea. Turned turn out the card wasn't a great <laughs> idea. But they, they the money could have probably could have been better spent somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there were other locations still open, but this one closed. And I don't know why. they. Honestly, I don't know why, because they always had a huge crowd. But... They closed, and so there was like a closing party, and there were so many people in the bar that night, and uh, they were selling employees' t-shirts, like work shirts, <laughs> and I said, man, there's nowhere else I could ever get a Killfish shirt in my life. I got to get one. So I bought from the bartender his shirt. <laughs> That's awesome. And That's now I have a uh, Killfish shirt. Okay. I, I washed That's it. hilarious. I washed it. Um, he took I it off, it. right? Yeah. Uh, okay. He had another shirt, but he's right. like, right, right. He's like, I'll sell you anything. I'm like, can I get like a shirt? He's like, yeah, you can have this. In your one. left shoe. In your left <laughs> shoe. <laughs> Give me that sock. Do you yo. still wear it? I actually, it has some holes in it, and every time I've washed it, I've worn it and washed it. Like the holes get bigger, so I kind of uh, stopped a little nervous wearing it. To, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did. I don't have it in the Czech Republic. It's in the U.S. right now, but I have okay. that. And like, there's really cool flea markets, like the one I was describing earlier. We can you can buy anything from like someone's old Soviet war medals to an accordion to a I don't know German uh, deactivated German hand grenade or something. Right. It's, it's really yeah. <laughs> you really you better hope that bad boy's deactivated. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's well, like a hole in they it. They said you... it was deactivated, but it, it's Russia. <laughs> it's deactivated, but just to be safe, don't pull that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Don't that don't pin don't right the there. <laughs> but we're pretty sure it's deactivated. I, I'm a I'm a, a watch nerd kind of, and they and there's a lot of cool like super cheap Russian dive watches and and pilot watches and stuff like mechanical watches that they have. And um, yeah. I, I find that stuff fun. Yeah. What's, um, what's it? Uh, Stormansky? You know that one? I have heard of that one. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. There are a lot of those at the flea market. Okay, okay. Uh, you, I believe you have a quarter of the pot for us? Yes. To uh, finish this off? Yes, yes, yes. It is on my phone. And I had David come up with it because he is our Russian expert of this episode. So he I figured is, it yeah. would only be right. Less so, work for Chad. That's really what it is. We know Chad. This is anyone. a quote about the <laughs> Russian... back vibes. Yeah. <laughs> this is a quote about the Russian spirit. Okay. It's a little Who dated, did? but I feel like it fits the theme well. Okay. We're talking about, you know, Russian friends and whatnot. Um, this is by the famous writer Fyodor Dostoevsky. So it is frightening. Ooh, yeah. Sorry, I played it early. <laughs> it is frightening how free a Russian man's spirit is, how strong is his will. No one has ever been so much torn away from his native soil as he sometimes had to be. Nobody ever took a turn so sharp as he following his own belief. So Russians are strong Oof, in their beliefs, heavy convictions, <laughs> and they're definitely unique. Um, do you do you do you uh, um, do you think you fit that sort of uh, f- um, personality trait? Is that why? Is that what? A, is that what uh, attracts you to that? Maybe I, I hope so. I def- Well, I'd say this. I don't know the answer to your question, but I'd say after going to Russia, m- that's what I think so more than before. You I'd appreciate gone. it. You definitely I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yes. Okay, that's fair. And I, that's I yeah, I mean. It definitely seems like even just to to not saying I would like and stuff like that. It definitely seems like something you have to get used to. And either I could I could definitely see someone not liking that that culture and 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 completely understanding that and being like that makes sense. But that's I think also part of the beauty. Not everything's for you. That's yes. for sure. That's the beauty of going to different cultures and traveling and and trying to figure out that special place for you. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, so we really appreciate the quote and all of the expertise and insight. Yes, and thank you so much, both of you, for having me on your show. I've enjoyed it, enjoyed talking about Russia. Oh, we I enjoyed it, too. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Absolutely. And I recommend it to everybody. I think it's such an interesting place um, with such an interesting culture that is unmatched. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
So we hope this was also insightful for all of you listeners out there. Maybe it will also invigorate a few of you to take the trip to Peter or St. Petersburg. Um, and we would love to hear your opinions about um, this episode and all of our other episodes. So please send us a message. Uh, you can slide into our DMs on Twitter, Untranslatable1. You can also um, check out some of our uh, clips and interesting photos on Instagram, Untranslatable Podcast. And if you have any suggestions of future topic ideas or untranslatable words or have a travel story you would like us to share on the podcast, shoot us an email at untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. Um, I would like to give a special thanks to my um, camo, which is uh, the Czech word for bro, uh, my buddy David for uh, coming on this episode and enlightening uh, and educating Jared and I both about uh, Russia and St. Petersburg. We you really betcha. appreciate it. And uh, we're looking forward to um, seeing what else uh, we can learn from uh, Russia and other places around the world and hope to have you back on one of these days again. And uh, we thank all of our listeners out there for the support. And we are looking forward to talking to you next time. And here on the Untranslatable Podcast, we give you a loud and proud Yekuyeme. Yekuyeme.